to like cycle through accents? I don't even know. I have no idea. I don't like I accents. I seem to remember that, but why don't you like accents? Your Fareed wasn't bad. I don't like accents because I have to put effort into it, and I am actually trying to build up my repertoire off stream. (laughs) He has to put enough effort into speaking normally. God, (laughs) requires like ninety percent brain power. I'm gonna get some water real fast. He is not wrong. (laughs) I'm also gonna get something to drink. Okay, a Pathfinder event. Mm. But no, because I'm still trying to work out that Western story in my head and everything. I'm putting voices to various NPCs and trying out various accents. What's the name of that group? So when I do run the game, I can try doing it Bubber style. I don't know what that means. Does that mean good? Does that mean bad? Uh, No, Bubber style is just making it really good and interactive. Oh. The way you do accents for every other character and so forth. Hey, I'll take that. That's a compliment. Compliment in my book... Who's out there in the audience right now, guys, as we do some uh, some pre-stream, well, pre-game setup? Uh, if I had Just to a guess, bunch of losers. No. About 58 people. No, not losers. There's no losers. They come here. here to watch us, Bob. Not losers. He raises a good point. That doesn't mean they're losers, okay? I mean, by the transitive property of loserism, it kind of does. That, that doesn't feel Speaking accurate. of, I need to go ahead and pass this link. <laughs> Speaking of being a loser. God, that sounds like that would be the ultimate Twitter tag for it. You know, speaking of losers, Shackled City. Yeah, well, I'm not going to do that. <clears throat> it's not what I'm trying to uh, to make the stream actually be. Hold on, MVG. Before you start throwing that rep around, I've got to title this tweet. Just very bored people? Oh, no, Luce. Oh, no, Luce. People Don't are all bored. very bored at a very specific uh, time. No worries, Luce scene. You know it's not going to be boring once we get rolling. Oh, yeah. It's going to be awful pretty much immediately. It's going to be like a train wreck. Yeah. That's what we all expect out mm. of... Uh, out of Wednesdays. Natural occurring disaster. <laughs> oh, man. Um, so where'd you end up putting the book? I mean, I've got the book. I'm just trying to find my page in the book because I've been running multiple segments of this game. Not that book. The book I gave you. Oh, um, it's currently in a special spot to not be touched. I treasure that book. Well, I expected to go ahead and see it like on one of your displays behind you, but okay. well, they're currently like they're they're dude. It's it's all like there's just so much on them. I'm I'm running out of space. The chisel, the chisel. That's the name of it. I was in my head. I just kept saying the cudgel. It's close. The chisel oh, better than is... what Red would have replied with. Where's the cuckold? Oh God. Red is involved, it's true. I think did he restart? No, he didn't no, restart. Here. Oh, he's here. Yeah. I just I started mean, typing. Yeah, I'm currently fucking around in my command prompt. Give me a bit. Okay. Let's place this Thank you guys. on the shuckle say. Watch game. And this is gonna have to adjust. Oh yeah. Well, shit, if we can't get your Skype your Skype to start, then uh Maybe testing out Discord video a little sooner than we thought. <laughs> ah, Baja Blast. It's a good night. <laughs> ah. It's, getting, it's like getting a shot in the mouth from the gods. I don't think so. I happen to quite adore not getting shot in the mouth by gods. I think that's a sniper thing. Might be right. You are not son. Pathos.
inning system scan. This progress will take some time. Do you getting verification? Hey, Gwen, what's going on? Oh boy. I mean, could you just like uninstall and reinstall Skype? It's not. Um, it's an error with. It's an error with my Microsoft uh, C plus plus twenty fifteen redistribution pack. Yep. Um, that is not currently installed on my computer, but when I try to install it, it tells me that it's installed. Can you not so. find and replace the files? It's it, the files are not there. No, I mean like when you're installing it, does it not give you the option to replace the files that are already no. there? It just it says, "Hey, uh, we can't do anything. Bye." And I feel like that's an inaccurate representation <clears throat> of the message they give you. Look, on here. I hope it's those exact yeah, words. Something yeah. tells me he's <laughs> those going to those exact down. words, I'll fucking eat my shoe. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, something tells me he's going to have to get on his phone cam again. There's that possibility. And let me mute that. Turn off your fucking phone, dude. Gosh. Can't print screen my command prompt? That probably makes sense. Uh, if you're tabbed into it, I don't think you can, but... No, you can't. But, uh, this is how this is going. So, you know, in a few hours, I'll probably be able to use Skype again. Ooh, mine, that. mine made me log out before I log back in again, for some reason. So yeah, I had an interesting conversation today. Oh yeah, go for it. Oh, managed to go ahead and was talking about playing tonight with a friend. I found out that a friend of mine is actually a tabletop nerd. On top of being an executive chef to, at a bed and breakfast in the <laughs> Carolinas. Unfortunately, she's big into exploding dice, you know, Vampire the Masquerade, White Wolf games. So, so there were arguments. The there friendship more, is strained. There need, there need to be more people who are uh, <clears throat> fans of uh, Call of Cthulhu and Vampire the Masquerade. Hey, LZT, more, what's going more, on? There? More parties need to lose. How are you doing, LZT? What's going on in your neck of the woods, man? Did I get your rep? I did. I did get your rep. Um, I need to know exactly what it was for again. It was Mechanical 23, right? On Jared? Yes. Dawson, any? I remember it was on Jared. That's all I really remember, though. Yeah, it doesn't matter if it was on anybody else. It's just like, oh, yeah, it's on Jared. Definitely on Jared. How are you doing, Wandering? You miss my lovin's? Well, I mean, you gotta, gotta come see my face, Wandering. That's been quiet these past, like, two weeks. I got partnered, then I went on break. When I come back, it's like everybody's cold and upset. Also, they, a lot of people are going back to school. Do what? Two of you talked at the same time. Couldn't hear either of you. Go, any go. You're waiting for comment. Go ahead. <laughs> uh, I was going to say that people are also going back to school now. And and uh, the uh, the workers as well. Are they going back to school now? I, I started school this week. Gotcha. I also started school this week. Yeah. What I had said is that they got you partnered and now they can relax and they don't have to try as hard. Yeah, that's pretty much <laughs> it. Yeah, good, good, uh, good point. Good point. Yeah, I hope that's not the case. I, I can't actually recall it being very trying clicking on a button and vegging out. It is for me. Well, it you're is also, also a shit for lord. me. You're both shit lords. See, I can't, Where, I, where's the lie? Where is it? <laughs> At least for lords, bud. Yes. Lords the, lords of something. Of, the lords of shit. <laughs> yeah, he's, I'm he's the lord of Manua Manor. <laughs> I'm the lord of the flies. That's because I've been cold and upset. Why are you cold and upset, Wandering? Been running through my head all day today. What's What's going on, Wizard? Why are you running through your head? You must be exhausted. 
That wasn't enough rep, cheap ass. <laughs> oh man. When was that was just used recently? I can't even remember when that was used. Someone What was it for? Someone donated or someone gave 17,000 reputation for something. Jesus Christ. Oh, it was it was uh, Shaft. Shaft uh, gave seventeen thousand rep to uh, to the to the well, wished like that, and <clears throat> said that wasn't enough rep, cheap ass. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness! Good, good wondering. I'm happy, I'm happy to hear that you're okay. A mech for Jared? Not a mech. A mechanical quirk. Fuck that, I saw Mech. Personally, yeah, no, I mech. 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 hard, which is the only thing I'm okay with me trying hard to do. Oh no, I've I want I want Jared game. riding into battle on an orc now. <laughs> Alright, we're now mech anime boys. Greedy Goblin Vault is greedy, you're right. You're definitely not wrong. The chisel has requested the aid in the efforts of the flurry. Is the uh, is the Bane and Boon accurate? Yes. Okay. Swag. Wait, what? Yeah. Also, uh, I'm actually wearing my buff fest shirt. Now that I, uh, I look down. That's right. You guys can check out the Design by Human store. Just to let everybody know, because I don't feel like it's even told that often, um, if you don't know, you can check out the Discord for anybody that's not familiar with it. There's the Discord. If you're unfamiliar with how to locate me on Twitter, there's my Twitter. If you want to check out all the new awesome stuff on Humble, anytime you use that link right there through Humble, you can <laughs> uh, you can give me a little kickback if you buy anything through Humble. It's pretty awesome. Um, I am now uh, halfway verified. Here I haven't checked, uh, is the Humble. Design by Human store. You can actually get all of the sweet shirts, posters, mugs, any of that stuff that you uh that you'd like to get um all of my shirts are available uh even as far back as Bubfest 2016. i feel like i need to get that let's get ready to fumble but i, I should I have it tattooed people. on my forehead <laughs> at least the temple at least the temple you then get a d20 on each temple both on uh one yeah, yeah, it's not even like there's a 1 and a 20. It's just then again, these men's baseball tees look actually pretty sweet. <laughs> I just wish I could get it on a mug. That's what I would like to do. Wait, is that I put the D in D&D &D, a real shirt? Um, hopefully soon, hopefully soon. When uh, when Aditya or Azogias pop up uh, from their rest, I will be asking them for the files so I can make that a shirt. That's apparently oh. my partner shirt created by uh, Aditya. For those of you that didn't get to see it, let me go ahead and grab it for you. Uh, Bob, quick question. What's up? Um, you know how the D6 dice we can give to someone else as a D4? Yes. Uh, can I just pass mine on right now? Uh, no, there's nothing happening right now. I know, but I'm saying, like, if... Like, can I just hand it off to someone as a D4 in that sense? No, you, you've got to be able to give it to them at, in that particular moment. Oh, okay. Yeah, because otherwise, you know, they just get to hold on to it throughout the session. Yeah. No, we want to wait until after they have that moment of failure where they're kind of going, guys, guys. There you guys go. Check that out. That's the, uh, the Twitter link from Aditya and Azogius. They made a... Uh, shirt. It's a D&D &D shirt. I put the D in D&D. &D. You should check that out. Oh, dude, it would be awesome to have a mug that as you drink something, it rolls for you or something like that. I don't know of that kind of pairing available at the moment. 
It could be like the little magic eight ball where I guess at the bottom it moves. So every time it like <laughs> shuffles, it would just slide to a different number. No, I think the only way to do that proper would be to have a bubble on the side of the mug. That way when you tip to drink, it rolls. But then it would have to be on the bottom of the mug or something so that it actually bottoms out. Otherwise, you're just yeah. looking at the side of the dial all the time. I think most people drink dark fluids, too. Like, mm -hmm. if, if someone's using a, a mug, they're using co they're drinking coffee, typically is what I think of. So, you know, it wouldn't yeah, be Yeah, which means that if you're going to go ahead and roll, pound that shit. I was going to say, don't put it on the bottom of the mug because you wouldn't know what you rolled. <laughs> Piping hot coffee just chugging down your throat. Oh god, please no. If you don't fucking <laughs> down it, then what are you even doing, dude? I don't need that in my life. You fucking- you slam that shot in the morning. Just go down. You don't even drink coffee. <laughs> little bitch. <laughs> Jesus. Actually, yeah, a thermo mug would be good, Jacko. Just having it with the 20 on the front, and then so, and as, then you you know, as it heats up- thermos. And as it heats up, it just starts, you know, it shows a one and underneath goat spin here. I feel like it should be the other way around, though. Like, as, like, with it being hot and the coffee is still in it, like, full one. and fresh, then it should be a one. And then as you finish the cup, it goes down to a 20. You're, like, you're waking up as you go through the cup. The oh, that makes better. sense. Yeah, yeah, that makes sense. But that's inspirational, which is not D&D. D and D should be shame. Maybe not for you. And failure. <laughs> I'll take my one to twenty instead of a twenty to a one. See, I would say twenty to one because it. it or it would be like a modifier table. Then you slowly I just got out of bed. Of course, I'm at a twenty. And as no, I wake God, up and no. realize I have to go I'm to never, work. Never no. at time. <laughs> I'm roll out of bed. not a morning person. Oh my <laughs> wake God. up and I'm so basically at my best. Like I stumble to the coffee maker, and then as soon as, as soon as I start drinking it, I start to feel a little bit better and awake. But S Sniper is a guy that does a front flip out of bed in the morning, <laughs> and then immediately stubs his toe and has a shit day for the rest of the day. <laughs> okay, new idea: uh, a set of dice ice cube makers. Those are they already made those. Yeah, but, have yeah, them. but you have to have them set. Not yeah, they have them as. I have, I have D20s. They have them as uh, full sets. Um, the D4 all the way up to the D20. Do they have a D1? No, I didn't think so. When they I don't have up, a D3. I say, Alexa, good morning, and my lights and music turn on, and my water kettle turns on. Goddamn smart houses. Water <laughs> kettle. Alexa's the name okay, of the Okay, somebody's pretty. <laughs> I like Kenny's idea. I don't necessarily know if making tea makes you British. I don't think it does. Which means easy tea every morning. Yeah, I could be wrong, I'm, of course. I'm, I'm pretty sure Armus's wife is just named Alexa. <laughs> and she's like, do you have to do this every morning? It's, uh, it's like, what's no, it's actually like that one movie where the dude falls in love with his house. He might or, be in trouble. Oh, if he's, no, yeah. with his house. Okay, never if, mind. If he's married, he might be in trouble for the things that I witnessed at Hamburger Mary's in, in <laughs> L.A. <laughs> Guys, there's the Twitter post. Share it out. Share it out. Let everyone know about the game tonight. It's about uh, 65%. Hey, Dan, what's going on? Oh shit, 66. Oh man, it's going. You're two thirds of the way there. Ooh, boy. Oh, Ooh, drink. Man. Right back. Imagine if your wife's name was Siri. Why are you talking to all these boys? Hmm? Hmm. That would be it hard to explain to a wife. It's true. It certainly is true. I am somewhat curious, but I know that this is a story that's probably never getting aired. We're actually, we're soon to finish this chapter, guys. I'm pretty happy about it. Pretty happy about it. What do you think? Six more sessions? Um, 
It just depends. It depends on how fast you guys move through uh, the combat. I think that the combat itself is is going to prevent its own struggles. But yeah, the the dungeon is going to be a little rough. Uh, people have prepaid lots of things to be inside of this dungeon. Mostly traps. Mostly traps. Yeah, mostly traps. Oh, I'm cool with that. Snipers into traps. So my alarm clock is also Alec Baldwin telling me to wake up, which I have to make sure to change next time I get a nighttime guest. <laughs> That's good. That's good stuff. Just change it to the Ron Perlman voice. No, God. That would be almost too much. What's up, Mr. <laughs> Maddox? How you doing, Tony? How's your back doing, brother? Bub just wakes up every morning with uh, Hellboy playing in the corner. Oh, crap. Wake up, kid. He wakes up every evening with a big smile on his face. <laughs> I don't think that makes much sense, in or out of context. <laughs> hey, Elusive Wit, thank you so much for the follow, brother. I appreciate that. We were also followed by... Delicacy XO? Oh, man. Three fourths of the way done. I can't. I'm. I'm sure I butchered your name. Forgive me. It's getting better. Can't complain. Having a good day at work. How am I? I'm. I'm okay. I'm okay actually. I'm. Uh, I'm a little tired. I'm trying to reset my sleep schedule. Gotta reset the sleep schedule. It's been rough. It's been super rough lately. Uh, but that's okay. You know, it's. We're 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 trying to work through it, right? We're trying to make sure that it's all good and, and Gucci. Baron Snugs, how are you, man? How late am I? How late am I staying up till? Um, well, I was staying up till like 5 a.m. Was staying up till like 5 a.m. and um, even then, like going to bed was difficult. But I've been slowly tapering back, like 15 to 20 minutes a night. Uh, last night I went to bed at I think 4, like 4:15. Uh, tonight I'll probably try to go to bed. Uh, at about 3.45. Hey, Juicy, what's going on, bud? Long time no see, man. Insomnia? Yeah, mostly. Mostly dealing with uh, the inability to, to sleep well. I, I'm like, I'm the kind of guy that if I've got work to do and there's work that I can be doing, I will do that instead. I'd, uh, I'd recommend to you a, a nice, warm uh, cup of uh, milk. See, you've recommended that a million times, despite the fact that you know that I'm lactose intolerant. <laughs> I would literally stay up for the next several hours <laughs> shitting my brains out. <laughs> That's not fun or funny. Why are you laughing? It hurts. <laughs> That's pain. You're our DM. He wants pain on you. Personally, I, you know... I end up taking melatonin, a tall glass of, you know, a tall glass of water, rub one out, boom, I'm gone. You need all three of those? <laughs> Do you rub one out onto the melatonin? No, into the milk. It goes down Lord. easier that way. <laughs> it's a screamer. He has no problem taking the pills. It's just, you know. Well, the melatonin is actually the melt in your mouth kind. Food. So it's like the fast is all. That's you know that's that's what it is. That's what it is. Is snipers like? Well, I mean, I can't I'm trying really to build that mental get, connection. I can't really rub one out until I get sleepy dick, where it's just like not <laughs> sure if it wants to be hard or not. <laughs> just like I'm not sure if I want to be awake. <laughs> <laughs> that should be sassing the DM about the milk. It it certainly should be. Christy, how are you? I mean, What's up, like everything fire? Austin does is sassing the DM, honestly. He's, he's just... You know what? One time he's, he's going to sass the wrong him person. Sassing the DM. He's, he's been antagonizing the, the shit out of you like all night, so... You know, I'm just saying. I I mean, I do that when we're playing platformers. I I always do that. Are we, are we lifting tomorrow? With. Um, Probably not. Probably not. Give me just a little while longer to get my sleep thing taken care of. Because this, yep. this is bad right now, man. If you want the real worst time you can have playing a game with me, play Portal with me. No. Yeah, I don't want to do that. No. 
I don't think that. Red, I do not want to play any game that requires your participation. I have I have played Portal with like I think three or four people, and it is always they don't talk to you anymore. It's I, I actually of... did play Portal Two with you at one point. Granted, <laughs> like every second of it. You hurt my heart here. Then go to Fogo tomorrow. I I can't I can't swing Fogo, dude. Like Fogo to Chow is one incredibly expensive, and two. I can't. I can't. I cannot afford that, and I don't think I would allow anyone to spring for me because it's um, it's like between fifty and eighty dollars a plate, and I'm saving up to pay off my student loans. There you go, panic. In, you know, what is Fogo? Fo Fogo de Chao. It's, it's a Brazilian it's restaurant. A Bra right? Yeah, it's a it's a Brazilian uh, live uh, barbecue bar. They, oh, oh, sort of like cowboys and okay, yeah. They I, basically bring bring out rack of like lamb and steak and like all of on these big skewers and, and they just like yeah, that's right. right. And it's like how much do you want? And you're like, I want this much, and you just show them hand size, and they're like, okay, and they just give that much to you. Yeah, it's all you can eat meat. It's a Brazilian steakhouse. Yeah, yeah. So he's not going to lift. So instead, you're going to power him to protein. <laughs> Yeah, no, I think part of the reason that I'm actually sleeping so shittily is because I'm not working out. When I was working out, I was actually having more early endorphins in the day and super amped. And I would kind of taper off into the night and fall asleep by about 1, maybe 2 o'clock. But now I'm staying up to like 5, sometimes 6 in the morning, and then sleeping in until 2 to 3 p.m. And I'm just not okay with that. Because I was waking up at 9, 10 in the morning... And having an entire day to do things. Now I feel like I just lose my whole fucking day. See, I hate being awake early in the morning because I feel like no one is ever fucking around. So Why it's did done... you pick the job you picked? Well, because I I figured my job would be at the same time yours was would be like overnight. Yeah, but you didn't like no. find well, that out beforehand. No, because I I was I figured every you know freight job or, or flow job would be at night, and then when I got there, they're like, hey, by the way. No. Working at six, and I was like, "Oh, it's okay. true." Yeah. Okay. A it's lot true. of them work some super people, early in the morning. Some people are just natural night owls, man. I, I get that. I'm a hundred percent night owl. I I have been that way, but like I just lose so much of my life if I stay up way too late, man. And I I want to be tired because lately there's been a lot of times that I go to bed when the girls are waking up, and I don't want that to happen. I want to spend time. With, with the ladies in bed. I, I, like, I want to fall asleep next to them. I sleep better when there's someone else in bed. And I'm not sure if that's for everyone, but for me, for me, I sleep better when there's someone else in the bed. So when I go to sleep and there's no one there, and it's just the cat, like, constantly crawling up on my chest and fucking with me, I'm... I get... I just get... I get upset. It just ruins basically most of my day. But... It's okay. It's okay. I'm going to get back to working out soon. I'm going to be back to eating healthy soon. I'm going to be trying to put up 300 pounds on bench by June. Uh, everything, Everything's slowly moving in the right direction. We got partnership, guys, which is great. It's going to be like, what, um, the 22nd? So we're like we're just shy of three weeks, I think, uh, of being Something partnered. Like I'm still waiting to go ahead and, like, see the entire clip of when you went ahead and found everything out when you got raided i want to see you cry again <laughs> it's out there it's out there I mean, yeah it's, it's in the vods but a lot of it is uh is cut out because of music I, yeah i mean yeah, on the I vod all he is is just like sniffling calling leslie yeah 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 there i mean there are a couple of odds that you can you can look at um it was it was pretty emotional it was really emotional but I'm, you know, I'm a lot better now. I'm just, at, I'm at the point where I'm trying to redefine my goals. And I think I've discovered what I have. I, I have an early goal list of things. And this goes out to anybody out there that's trying to, trying to get partnered or you're thinking about streaming. Uh, if it's your dream to become a partnered streamer, you should have more dreams following that. You should have more goals outside of becoming partner because you can't. I didn't, I because honestly, I've been denied so many times, I thought it was a joke and that I was never going to get partnered. But I finally got partnered, and 
I sat for like two weeks following and I didn't really know what I was gonna do because I didn't have any extra goals. So I came up with a list. I came up with a list of goals. And I'm gonna do them this year, they're gonna happen. I'll put all of my time and all of my effort to it to make sure that it happens. So the D&D is always gonna be around. It's not ever not gonna be around. I'm gonna make sure that it's consistently happening week to week to week to week. You guys are gonna see it for sure. But my goals for 2018 is to make it to 500 subscribers. That's really not that hard. It's 500 subs. I'm already halfway there as is, so I know that we can do it. I also want to get to 100% on Patreon. We're at 73%? I think that's right. I think it's 73% right now on Patreon. Um, I want to be on the front page of Twitch. At least one time this year, I want to be on the front page of Twitch. And I had another one. What was it? Oh, I want to kick off a podcast. I want to kick off the D20 debut podcast and make sure that that's uh, flying. Everything's bumping on all cylinders. I'm going to get back to lifting. It's true. It's true. I, I will get back to lifting with Mr. Medics and we will lift to, to many things. Install the not safe for work hot tub. Oh, Lord. Oh, Lord. I mean, I could. I could put it in a not safe for work hot tub for those late streams, but people would have to be up for them. Not to mention, you'd have people like me hopping in them. Do you really want that? Do you want me in your hot tub? I mean, you're here already. You're one of the people that I tell everyone to watch out for in the tub. Mm -hmm. Watching like a shark. Like a hawk. Like a shock. There we go, a shark hawk. <laughs> shark kick on? Yes. Thank you, Juicy. Watch I out for that shock hawk. No. No, please, no. Not like this. <laughs> it's Bub and I lifting in my basement listening to Backstreet Boys. Then we skip to Fogo and enjoy Lamb. Backstreet Boys? No, no, it's in sync. I mean, I mean, how are you going to know you're not on it there? That it's way. true. It's true. <laughs> oh man, I just uh, I found out something last night um, while we're waiting on Austin. What's uh, what's your ETA, bud? Austin? Yeah, that's a good question. You're not paying attention. Uh, what did? No, I'm you... I'm 100 percent paying attention. I I would like to answer your question. What are you showing? Well, I don't... Uh, that's my uninstalled programs. That's yeah, I have literally every other uh, C++ but 2015. Uh, and that's the one that's causing the issue. And it's whenever I try to install the 2015, it's like, dude, you already have it, dude. What are you trying to do, bro? So, Tony, um, I, I've I've done a lot of research on like the world's strongest men. And one of the world's strongest men is uh, Big Z. I'm not sure if you guys are familiar with Big Z. Uh, but it's actually Zidrunus Savikus, and he's this uh, Icelander, I think. No, he's uh, he's Lithuanian. And Big Z, before, uh, like when he was setting all these records, the dude was built like, like a barrel. He literally looks like a hairless version of Gragas with more top head, like more, more hair on the top of his head. And then something happened, and he just lost, like, all of his body weight, and he's nothing but pure muscle mass now. Mm -hmm. And it's bonkers how scary looking this guy is. This is one of the world's strongest men. I'm going to post a before and after of him. Oh, please do, because, I mean, I, I've seen Big Z before, but I didn't hear anything about him going ahead and going through a cut routine. Oh, yeah, so this was, um, this might be, like, the entire internet link, but here's... There's Big Z. Zidrunus. That's him when he was setting all the world records, being the world's strongest man. And here is him today. Holy crap. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know what he did. I don't know what he cut out of his diet, but... The dude is is a shit brick house. 
while he really didn't have to go ahead and cut anything out of his diet, you got to remember that one of the reasons that these lifters are as big as they are is one, more mass you have allows you to go ahead and convert energy to more mass. Yeah, and here's here's a side by side. Here's a side by side that shows you like just just in girth alone, man. He's lost a ton of girth, but you can tell he's not really lost. It, like it doesn't look like he's lost any muscle mass. But he gets paid to lift weight. That's kind of cool. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, he's a big boy. He's a big boy. He's actually like, ugh, it's scary. Like watching him lift is nutty. Who gets paid? Hey, Denny, what's going on, man? Uh, we're talking about a weightlifter by the name of Zidrunus Savikas. Um, he is the world's strongest man, or at least always a contender in the world's strongest man. I think the last time I checked, it was Eddie Hall. Uh, Eddie Hall is like five foot six, and the dude actually looks like Zangief. Um, but Zidrunus Big Z is—he's a monster. And the last, like, let me look at this. Um, Eddie Hall. He's not even that old. Dude, he's a year younger than me. <sighs> or I lied. Or I lied. He's 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 still shorter than me. He's 6'3". He's shorter than me by an inch. But he's the only man to deadlift 500 kilograms. Holy shit, he's huge. Yeah, me, I've got a, I, I, I've got a secret desu moment when it comes to strongman i yeah. love seeing them when they the first time i actually got turned on to watching strongman it's 1100 pounds if you don't know was when they were doing the keg tosses i went ahead and stumbled out of that and i was like no way what yeah yeah it's i just did it right there it's uh 1102 pounds yeah A deadlift. He's in the thousand pound club just with his deadlift. If you don't know who Eddie Hall is, like here's a here's a picture of this this wild bear. Eleven hundred pounds. Good God, that's just that's fucking bonkers. Oh, I think I would be happy just being able to lift my own body weight. Okay. You love the event where they pick up a metric ton? Wait, what? I misread two things. They pick up the boulders. Excuse me, the guy deadlifted half a metric ton? Yeah. Yeah. It's actually funny because he, when he was lifting it, um, it was an outside event, from what I remember, if I remember the documentary. It was an outside event, and he was barefoot, just wearing shorts, and he had wraps on his hands. Uh, and his wrists, and when he lifted, his feet started sinking into the dirt. Oh, that man. That sounds about right. Yeah. Yeah, it was cool. It was interesting. Uh, I've never checked out Phil Heath. I, I, I can probably do some research on that. Dude looks like Ronnie Coleman. Just looks jacked. Did you have more of the weird sauce from last night's chicken dinner? Wait, what? Yeah. At max, I deadlifted one third of that. That's a lot. That's a lot in deads. I feel smaller than I do normally from these people. Yeah. I mean, these guys, like, they're predisposed to better genetics, right? Like, they're, they're, some people just have it, genetically speaking, better than others. Like, the guy, um, Half Thor, um, I can't remember his last name. Um, it's the mountain. Bjornsson. Yeah. That guy's... He's fucking huge. He's he's a monster. And he makes everything that everybody else does look easy. Where people struggle lifting these enormous weights, he just... He just makes it look easy, and it's nuts. Like, even Eddie Hall's like, it's not fair. It's like, I struggle to do everything that I do. I've always been the little guy. And he just makes it look easy. When are we back from break? Well, we're basically trying to wait on, on Red, which is Sun over here. 
uh, to fix his computer or go to his mobile. If he can set up mobile. Can you do that for us? Maybe. Give me one second. Why don't we just try Discord video first and see if that'll work. Then we can go to mobile from there. If not, I mean, that way he already has a program open. Oh, it's, it's gonna take so long to set up the, the cameras again. He can, if, if he hops in on his phone, I literally don't have to set up anything else. I just have to toggle off a button. Versus us going into Discord and setting up the cameras that way. Alright, whatever's easier. You can't be a slouch and still do what they do even if you took extra stuff, yeah. It takes a lot to get to that point. Okay, well, Austin's going to set up his camera in just a moment, even if it's got to be on mobile, and that's fine. We can actually start doing our our, uh, our warm-up here. Let's, let's uh, recover the events from last time. I'll turn Sweet. us down here. So. Oh, boy. What happened last time? What was what was some of the, the events that transpired uh, last time on Shackled City, if you guys recall? Uh, we finally met with the order of... Uh, the leader of the chis uh, the chisel, which was Olaron Mosh. Uh, we also found out that Mabu was a member, uh, and Mickey Mac Mickey Max was a member, yes. as well as Akane Smallcast or the Honest Minstrel. Um, those are the four members right now that we know of that are part of this order. Um, on top of that, we when we walked into the um, into the orders. Uh, uh, secret uh, meeting room. They showed us a. It was. Oh, there's a word for it. Give me a second. Don't tell a me. Mural? No, it wasn't a mural. What was the name for it? Uh. It was. The fresco. It was a fresco. Yes, Fres the wall. The wall frescoes. Um. Um. Of the what history is, is of a, Sir Barton. Just to kind of keep you guys in in the loop, what is a wall fresco? Is it just a, a painting? What What is a fresco? Uh, no, you said it's it was like, like a, a relief, right? It's like carved into the wall. Yeah, it's it's uh, yeah. It, it sort of is. It's, it's done like uh, stone it looks like stone work, it's, right? It's it's like a plaster work. Yeah. Um. So it gives it depth and dimension. Um. Yeah. And these have been um, here for a while. Like, how long are are you guys thinking? Until Klaus um, came into the room. It was. Sometime shortly after the events of Surbar's uh, story, at least from the story that depicted, so they they were there for, a, I believe, a few hundred years, from what I was told. Okay, correct. Because Surbar himself is uh, was supposed to be a super powerful wizard, <clears throat> and um, it was depicting uh, his story all the way up until his death. Um, but we were there was two kind of key points that were picked up on. Uh, the story being told to us, one, the symbol of the mountain that represented his death didn't really match any known uh, tomes or any uh, record of his, like, as a symbol of him dying. Correct. Um, the other one depicted his staff, and um, as far as anyone was told, he didn't have that with him um, when he essentially departed or when he died. Uh, going on from that, when... Uh, not Jared. Sorry, um, Dia. Uh, when Dia, sorry, was uh holding the lantern, um, she noticed that it started to pulsate, uh, wildly as it started getting towards the the fresco, <clears throat> and as it got closer and closer to the wall, it started to become more and more violent, um, to a point where. It finally shattered, and um, Klaus's soul energy essentially shot into the fresco um, to the other side of the wall. Uh, that's where we discovered that there was a, a hole made, and that there was another uh, entrance on the other side. There was something also in the wall. Yes, there was. What what uh, was actually inside of the wall? It was a 
ancient dwarven hammer, <laughs> but there was runic carvings on it written in several different languages, one of which we could have reckon we recognized as an ancient dialect of dwarven that none of us could really depict. Does any of this have any kind of bearing on Dea at all? Dea, do, do you, like, how are you feeling about all of these things that are happening at the moment? Dea still doesn't know what's going on as far as uh, the, the spell masons, uh, apart from what she's been told from the Chisel themselves. Sure. But uh, she, she feels that something's coming and uh, at the end of all of this, and it's not going to be very good. Just kind of a yeah. gut feeling. Sure, right. Um, during this conversation, though, we were also told that um, Jared's brother, um, Tercion Skellering, was going to be marching on Red Gorge with an army to challenge Alec Tercival for... Um, I guess Ter uh, Tercival's right to become the new guard captain. Um, so as was, a... was that really the point, though, of, of this meeting that was called? Was just to speak solely of, of Alec Tercival? Or what was the entire meaning behind this conversation with the chisel inside of Red Gorge? Can you guys the... recall? Overall message, that overall message that we had behind it. Yes. Which was to go ahead and speak with Eric Tercival and see about bringing peace in as opposed to the challenge and hopefully extend that peace into the city of Cauldron. As I understood. Yeah, that's essentially we what sent we... out by Mavu to go ahead and speak with him specifically. Well, that, that was one point, but the foreman brought up something entirely different. He said that there was something greater than than Alec Tercival on the horizon. Something very important was happening. Can you guys recall it whatsoever? Not a bit. Not off the top of my head. I don't have it in my notes either, unfortunately. Okay, so the foreman started with raising the point about the organization's current situation. Uh, some of the interests of the people that are here and a few of the Cauldronites. It seems like the neutrality has shifted and obviously nobody seemed to care about the wellness of society as a whole. Um, but the foreman revealed his fears of something greater uh, in the form of a chaos, some kind of evil working inside of Cauldron's government. Not really entirely clear what that is, he said that he had a line-in with uh, an individual or something that could basically grant him divination, a prophet of sorts. And that when he called upon information regarding these disasters that are looming over the horizon, this person or thing refused to speak of details. This is why the foreman has drawn you guys together, because something lurks in wait. <clears throat> There's something more at, uh, at play here. Oops, that's not it. This is what I want to play. Oh, that's right, because one of the things I mentioned was the mayor, right? The mayor of Cauldron being corrupt? Because that had come up before. Yes, yes. You, you did want to bring up something about the mayor. Uh, and this is not something particularly that Pathos has knowledge of. Um, no. It... I mean, any of your other characters may have had a bit more of an inclination for knowing, but Pathos doesn't really know. Dea doesn't even really know. I think it falls more upon the shoulders of Klaus and Jared. Uh, Jared, yeah. I think Jared, yeah, both of them would uh, be the most, would be the direct line to figuring out that something's up right. with the mayor. Um, well, we're the only ones that have met the mayor, so. Sure. Klaus, yeah. uh, during, during these events, someone got a message. There's been two messages that have been passed. Someone got a message here, and you guys had already brought brought up a, a point about it. Do you recall what that message was and who got this message? Are you asking me specifically? Yeah. No. No, I do not. Uh, does anybody else remember who got the message and what it was about? Ronald, you, you, you brought this up. Are we talking about Jared's brother marching upon the yeah. city? Yeah, definitely. Yeah, the message. Yeah. In that case, yes, um, Jared was brought the message. <laughs> Jared was brought the message that his brother was Jared marching wasn't at the, the message. Head. This actually came to the minstrel. The minstrel spoke of it aloud. Mm. 
But Jared did get a message, something else that should also be noted. It's pretty important in these upcoming episodes. That uh, his brother wanted to see him, he wanted his return. Why? Because, uh, essentially that their, their namesake would be put on the line. So, I guess everything coming up, I think it's going to be more or less uh, Tercyon asking Jared to side with him to, I guess, protect that namesake. The letter I handed you is uh, Pathos. Yeah, remember when, we're talking about. when he introduced himself as Alabaster Glass. Right, I remember when he went ahead and introduced himself as Alabaster Glass, he had the letter which I can't remember off the top of my head, but I also know it was fairly clear, just hurry what you're doing, get back to the city, you're needed. There was a little more there. A little more there. Um, I can read it. I can read it again. I have it, your message right here. Go ahead, read it, please. Uh, some things have come to light. Things I fear may bring about the very end of this town. Our family has fought for, has uh, fought to care for. My position may be usurped, but from me, but I'll was I'll whilst not be sleeping while they hunt while they hunt me. I have overheard many things in a short time. I'm afraid to speak of it uh, here, but we will discuss many things upon your return. Your lineage, among other things, have been risen to question. If this message makes it to you, just know I have reason to believe that Alec Tercival is being manipulated. Speak of this only to those you trust. Tertion Skeller. Yeah. Right. Yeah, there were there were a few key points to uh, to note there. Um, what you took from it, obviously, is what obviously you find to be important to your character. Right. Which, let's be honest, if Jared was reading that, he'd be like, okay, get home quickly. Yeah. Uh, you know, as far as his lineage and everything, that's always been brought up into question. But as far as Tercival, that's probably a good point to keep in mind is that he's apparently possibly being manipulated. Which would make sense since Tercival disappeared from Red Gorge and nobody knows where he's gone. Right. Right, Alec is not in, in Red Gorge and he was supposed to be here. If you recall, the foreman had mentioned Alec Tercival supposing to have been in this very particular meeting, but he's missed it. He has missed it, which is unfortunate. All, uh, the all scrub. things aside, yeah. Um, Klaus came to be. He was ushered upon a new body, not just anybody, a very uh, important body. That would be yeah, the... because. Uh, oh, that yeah, because beyond the fresco was a dwarven made burial chamber that was very special because it actually held the remains of Sir Bar Spellbees. Thank you. Yes. And Who? Sir Bar is important for what reason, Any? Uh, he is the founder and creator of Red Gorge and, well, and a founder of Cauldron. Um, he also made the Basalt Bastions. Yeah. Which mm -hmm. are what secures the Red, Red Gorge. Gorge from well, everything. Also. The outside world. Also in Cauldron, uh, coming here would have been less of a surprise to see some of these bastions, because all of Cauldron is surrounded by these similar basalt bastions. This is actually what keeps, I mean, outside of the fact that everybody probably thinks they're fucking insane for building a city inside of a volcano, there are enormous basalt bastions that surround all of Cauldron, and it's meager four exits. Obviously, you guys know that there's more to it. Just because there's an exit to the north, south, east, and west doesn't mean that there's nothing above and below. So, people have been coming and going for a long time. You've seen that firsthand. Mm -hmm. Okay. Alright. What else happened? So, Klaus came to be uh, inside of the body of Surabar Spellmason, the founding forefather of the largest towns in the region. Um, he scared the ever-living shit out of essentially all members of the Chisel because yep. they realized who, uh, who the body was. <clears throat> and um, they kind of saw this 
as they thought it was Serbar until we, we kind of mentioned, like, you know, our friend just seems to have a knack for soul jumping. Um, they still believe me over you. From there, it was suggested to avert any alarm in the city um, that he take my mask so he could disguise himself so he currently looks like his former self um, at the moment. Uh, Pathos uh, also tried to talk to uh, Oleron. Um, tried to do some convincing, but it more turned into an argument than anything else, so he kind of had to leave it at that. And uh, Dea, I don't remember the exact uh, actions that you had with Oleron, but you gave him an arrow for something. Yep, I, he was having a shit time, so I said, uh, take it like an arrow when it goes back, it has to fling forward in the end. And then he dropped it and I walked away. Um, upon leaving the, the Chisel uh, Order Hall, we ended up going back up to the uh, Red-Headed Miners in uh, Topside. Right. Um, oh, sp- sorry, I completely forgot to mention. Um, Sun was actually the key factor of blowing out the wall to get us into that uh, place to begin with. He used uh, a, essentially a, like a, a blasting charge inside the hole and then uh, amplified the explosion because of how tight the space was. So he was the reason that we actually got that down there to begin with. So yeah, that was that. Um, but heading back up to the, to the inn, um, most of the group was getting ready for the evening and uh, Pathos was going to go out and try to converse with some people and gather some uh, information. Um, but I'm not sure what each one was doing or if you guys were actually resting up. I didn't know what was happening on that end because we ended. Okay. Okay, what was everybody else doing? In the end, the three stooges were up in their rooms having, well, a room, having an argument, and I decided to go down and have a drink because I didn't want to hear about it. Correct. <laughs> Correct. That's true. And upstairs, basically, it was just Jared filling Klaus in on wonderful stuff he missed. Okay. All right. I think that's everything that uh, that happened last session. Um, what do you guys think? Is there anything that I missed? No. no, I think we got all the bases covered right there. Yeah, I'm fairly certain we're missing quite a lot, but no, you didn't miss anything. Good. Well, I temporarily have a token in the place of Sun, so when he speaks, we'll kind of have at least an idea of what his character looks like. No problem at all. The funny That's... part about that is he's not going to be able to speak until his PC finishes updating, unless he jumps in on mobile. Right. Jared brought, brought Klaus back up to speed. Yeah, yeah, that's true. He did. That's true. Uh, Guys, we do have a system here in place if you're just watching for the first time. You guys can make some things happen regarding your reputation. Reputation is earned by sitting in chat, by defeating the bit boss, uh, by subbing and becoming a patron of Patreon. Um, You earn this rep and you can spend it to influence the games. And we do have a couple of quirks today. We do, in fact, have a couple of quirks today. So let's take a look at the table. Check your rep by typing in exclamation mark rep. And then you can check what you can spend it on on the table. I'll be right back real quick. I'm not loving us. Sure. Um, I'm going to go ahead and give you guys a moment to get any additional quirks in that you so see fit. uh, Or anything that you'd like to throw in. Now is the time. Um, I will not be accepting any more traps into the dungeon. Just because after looking at it, there's nowhere else to put dungeon traps. I can't put a trap on a trap on a trap. I'll just increase the damage die. That's about all I can really do. Oh, joy. So, first and foremost, Jared, you're being struck with a mechanical quirk. Mm. You may only communicate through interpretive dance. Well, thank God Klaus has already been brought up to speed. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, shit, that's good. Thank you so much, Elusive Wit, for subbing on Twitch Prime, brother. I appreciate that, man. Super kind of you, super kind of you. That puts us up to 240 subs, guys. Uh, remember, every uh, fifth every fifth sub will take us to a 
uh, a luck reroll. You guys can earn luck rerolls by uh, subbing on Patreon, subbing on Discord. Uh, every X amount of follows will actually, uh, I'll just toss in a luck reroll as well. And if the players are doing exceptionally well, if they're meeting the role play, I'll throw in a luck reroll in that case as well. So, um, thank you so much for that sub that puts us up to 240. Uh, at 245, a luck reroll will be given to every player at the table. When the sub count hits 245, I'll go ahead and adjust that so you guys can actually see it. Jason, thank you. 245. All right. All right, all right. So, um, yes, mechanically, you may only communicate through interpretive dance. I'm interested in seeing how you do that. Also, the performance part. Uh, Red. Uh, yeah, you're expecting me to dance on, on camera? Not happening. Well, I'll do description. Yeah, description is good. Maybe, maybe stand and give me a pirouette. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, red. We're still waiting to see you twerk. Stricken with uh, overly optimistic. Who do I give rep to if I want Sun and RP quirk? That would be to me. But currently, Sun is not available. At least as far as I can see. Is he here? He hasn't said anything else yet, so I don't, I don't know where his progress is at. He is not online. So red is MIA at the moment. No sun, and I, I will not be role playing red. Last thing I need to do is fuck with his character any more than he wants me to. He fucks it up in just the right way. Right, he does. You're not allowed to touch that. Name the Lord Pog Champ. It's true. Also, the next sub will kill the bit boss, and that's a hundred reputation to anyone in chat. That's literally everyone. So if you want some quick rep. Bub, I th I'm thinking silly number 24 would be kind of fitting for Klaus, but I feel like I can't put it in Jared. Is there anything else that knows pre this body Klaus besides Jared? Uh, nobody knows this body. Jared is literally the only person who yeah. knows who Klaus is. Yeah, so it probably wouldn't have any uh, effect, to be honest. Yeah, even, even then, even then, it probably wouldn't have much effect. Uh, you may as well just save that. I would save that space cake, at least until they get to know the guy a bit better. Because right now, Pathos, Dea, and Sun have no idea who Klaus even is. is I know he's not. For subs? Um, there is not. There is not. Hey! Damn, Chris. Damn. I'm, also pretty, I'm pretty sure that this is the first time anyone in this current party has seen me in this body. I didn't, I haven't realized, well, realized, considering I haven't seen, that you uh, just got in the body, got one yeah, more. <laughs> well, sure. I'm not talking about server. I'm talking about as myself as from, from original Klaus, OG Klaus. I don't think anybody here is seen yeah, as OG Klaus. Saying. I think Zakara was the only one, and he's dead now. So I mean, yeah. So it's really wait, no, 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 no. Jared has seen you as OG Klaus before you were turned into a rabbit. Has okay. He? What the hell were you yeah. introduced? A while ago. In that temple right after the slide. Yeah. Um so okay. yeah. two things. Yeah, I suppose that is right. Two things. One, it looks like Dea's just been quirked. Okay. Dea, you've been quirked with a roleplay quirk for the session you will be stuck with. Um, let's see. You will refer to your allies and anyone that you meet with sexual pet names. You will flirt with them. That that interferes a lot with my uh, mm -hmm. with my permanent quirk, which which makes all men pigs. <laughs> so ooh, having, ooh no no no! You can to... do it in a hateful manner, like you're a dominatrix. Hello, pig. <laughs> or you just use it as a means to an end, and yeah. you're secretly disgusted by yeah. the fact that you have to do this. But it works the best. I mean, it's it's really up to you at that point. Oh come on now, Dea just constantly just going like... around negging. Aren't you that would a be dirty funny. birdie? <laughs> <laughs> dirty birdie. <laughs> Any word on Austin Dominic. yet, or is he still? Uh... We're gonna we're gonna go we're gonna go on with that Austin. I'm currently reading quirks, but um, I did want to say Chris, God of One, just contributed fifteen hundred bits, and right now I've said this before, but I don't think most people paid attention, or they couldn't up to this point. The highest either donation 
inch stream for the month, or bits given, whatever is higher, will unlock for a month a new emote of their choice. For the month, you'll unlock an emote of your choice. So right now, Chris, you're currently leading it with 1,500 bits. You also beat the bit boss, so I'm going to hook you up and everyone else in chat with that rep. So does that mean he gets to pick an emote for next month, and then whoever is top yep. next month gets to pick? Okay, correct emote for the following month. Yep. Do you have an in-house emote artist? <laughs> it seems like it might get a little expensive. I've got, I've actually got like four or five uh, emote artists that I work with. Fair enough. And some of them are just like itching to get work done. So, Bubba Fred's not here. Can I give my work to Pathos instead? Um, what was yours? Role play. Six, yeah, uh, that's actually, like, that almost works into his character. That almost works into his character, so if that's something that you wanted to do, MVG, since you've already paid for it, you can either decide to put it to Pathos, or you can ask for a refund, and I'll refund it back to you. Or save it for next week. It's true. That's that's also very true. Sun is such a pessimist, so it it's unfortunate if he's not going to be able to make it, but that's fine. Okay. So you guys did get some information last session regarding where Alec Tercival went. Do you recall that? I know everyone was really tired, but you guys did inquire where he might have gone. And you got some information about that. Right. I think I remember something about a Red River. Let me see if I can pull up our notes. That's right. That's right. That's you're you're getting there. And juicy, let me get get the link for you, bud. I know that you've asked a couple of times. So let me get that for you. Um But no, I mean I, I vaguely remember them having gone sailing down the Red River. How far into what destination doesn't come to mind offhand. Can someone... I can't. It's not letting me because it's to my own page and I can't sub to my own page. Uh, can someone get the sub link and post that in for Juicy Juicy McBeefcake? Because once you post it... I wonder if it's still a thing, actually. Maybe I made it its own. I haven't yet. That's going to go on my list. Yeah, and I don't think anybody's going ahead of him. Yeah, I don't think we have anything. Copy. Open. New private window. Paste. Don't think I can since I'm subbed. Gotcha. I got it. Here, you're going to want to take this link. Why does you're that still product. say CCE? Uh, because you're probably still registered under that to them. That's even wild. Though, yeah, even though you've gone, undergone a name change. Because it says the Bubbernauts channel subscription. And parentheses, Bubbernauts CCE. Yeah, that's kooky. Well, there it is. So if you wanted to sub Juicy, that's for you, bud. Okay. Did you did you come up with anything? Not a thing. I'll, all I know is that they went sailing down the Red River. We yeah. have no notations, anything further than that. That's that's accurate. That that's what you were told. He he's been traveling down the Red River. And But it was away from Red Gorge or to Red Gorge? Away from Red Gorge. Away from Red Gorge. Okay. He's been yeah, he was due to have been returned already. Correct. Correct. That's that's accurate. You have all the information that you need. So, you guys did get your full rest that night. Everything went smoothly, or at least as smooth as it possibly can go. What do um, do? there was uh, something I wanted to do before the night rounded out. Okay. Uh, I wanted to actually walk the streets a bit and figure out if I can find out where Ulrock Mosh. You wanted to 
Wait, say that again? You wanted to rove the streets? Red Gorge? Yeah. Right? Correct. I wanted to figure out where uh, Olorok Mosh lived. And you think you can find that just by, like, roaming all of Red Gorge? No, that's why I'm saying I was going to go talk to people and stuff like that. So you wanted to go through an investigation phase? Okay. Yeah. All right, sure. Let me uh, let me set up the scene for you here. And just to be clear, nobody else wanted to do anything. You guys just want to... Yeah, at this point, Jared's already brought Klaus up to speed. And at this point, he wants to rest because he's still... I believe he is still making up for loss of consort. Okay. I'm drinking then going to bed. That's that's Dana's plan. Sounds like you your regular life. Yeah, that sounds like my real life. It's supposed to be fantasy, any? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, about that. Now the fantasy is that she's drinking good beer, and he's drinking Molson's. I don't drink beer. It tastes like shit. Um, I am keeping my hood uh, draped over me just so people don't get a good look at my face, or at least stick it up to the shadows, or people don't really see the complexion of my uh, my skin since Klaus has my mask right now. Sure. You uh, you know in the town that there's not really a curfew. They don't have the same things that Cauldron typically has. Now, obviously, that's not really a concern of yours because you and your kind particularly do work in the shadows. You don't mind doing work um, in, in the dark of night. It's not uh, out of your element. So, let's see. I'm going to look back. Red Gorge and see what kind of information they give me. Uh, given the map, I'm probably walking north since we came in from the west, or not the west, uh, the south, right? Yeah, you guys came in from the caravan gate, correct. Okay, so then I'd probably be heading north uh, in that direction. And that's where I would start kind of talking to people, asking around if they knew they know who Oleron is and uh, the kind of area that he's known to live in. Okay. All right. So a lot of this, a lot of uh, Red Gorge, when, when you're taking a look at it, it's you know, none, none of the houses look much better than the others. Um, you can tell a couple of the businesses tend to be a bit nicer, but a lot of the homes are fine. I mean, this this Red Gorge is founded upon masons, right? Like, it's... There's there's carpenters, there's tanners. Like, everybody here has a specific vocation. You don't really have um, like a slums. There's That doesn't really exist. There's only a couple of houses that have recently been struck by lightning or haven't been finished being built. So, asking around, um, particularly this late in the evening, when it comes to finding people... You may find drunks. You're not really going to find much in the way of beggars. Uh, it's very late. Uh, the only sounds you're going to hear is obviously night sounds and the sounds of the rivers flowing around uh, the city. Alrighty. Um, let's see. I guess even like walking the out, like the back alleys and stuff, would there be anyone, uh, I guess, similar to my profession that would kind of be in that area, or would there be any contacts other than Hillock that I've made that I might know of that could give me that information? Uh, not particularly, since you kind of utilize some of the um, the hidden ways that are beneath Red Gorge. You you do know your way around to a degree, but you know that that outside of you, there isn't really much that happens after dark here. Uh, this, Like I said, the the one group of people that you would think would be operating in the dark is the Chisel. And they don't really just operate in the dark, they operate all around, just behind closed doors. This is a pretty small town, all things considered. There's only a handful of roads, and most of them here rely on each other. 
Now, I'm not saying that there, are, there are no bad eggs in this community, but with information regarding an army mounting, nobody's really taking advantage of the situation. People are attempting to stay indoors, trying to prepare themselves. Getting good night's sleep, not worrying about it, is probably the first thing on their minds. Alrighty. Um, I guess I'll make my way back to the, the inn, uh, and I, I can, if I can, I guess get in touch with uh, Mickey Max. I'll ask him if he knows uh, where all runs at, because he's already seen my face, right? Because I've yes. already seen. Yes. Okay. Um, as you approach the uh, the bar, as you move back to the the Redhead Miners Inn, you you hear the sounds of a lute being strummed upon the, uh, not not quite the sidewalk, but the patio of sorts, where they have a few open chairs. A man sits, clutching a lute, balanced against his right thigh. His left leg is propped up on the lip of the chair, and he looks familiar. This is someone that you've met previously. I'm guessing it's going to be, uh, uh, not Sarabar, uh, Akane? Yes, it is the Honest Minstrel. Uh, as I see him, I'll uh, still keep him the hood on, just because I'm guessing there's still people coming and going from the tavern. Uh, Fewer and far between uh, this late in the evening, but yes. I'll walk up and I'll kind of, I guess, uh, put my back to the railing. And uh, are you near him, or are yeah, you in front I, of him? I walk, I walk up to him, and I'll, and I'll, or walk up to his area, and then I guess put my back up to the railing, and kind of just lean and listen to for the to the music that he's playing for a few minutes. Sure, it looks as if he's he's kind of uh, attempting to tune his lute. Problem with the uh, instrument. Nothing's wrong with the instrument, but everything requires a fine amount of work. Sometimes even the most trustworthy of instruments falls out of line, and it requires a deft hand to make sure that it returns to its previously working state. People are much the same way, no? I could agree, but sometimes people when given a guiding hand seem to snap at the most unusual times. Which is why probably working with instruments is so much easier to do with, wouldn't you say? Yeah, certainly so. Certainly so. I found that the inanimate just talk back less. But they talk back still. Just... Only when provoked. Only True. When provoked. This is for certain. And the sounds they make are always so much sweeter. Oh, Preach On! Preach On! What keeps you in the streets this evening, Sir Pathos? A hungering, you could say. A hungering for information, if you could uh, be so kind to indulge me on, on that. Well, I know many things. I've met many people. How would the honest minstrel be of service to you this evening? The man that we talked to, not but a few hours ago, Oleron Marsh. Oh yes, Oleron. He's led the chisel for a while now. Honorable and he's man. A, Honorable, and, yes. And he's a good man. But I believe he's foolhardy in his efforts to not want to take certain actions. And I feel like I can persuade him to at least set up a contingency, should the worst come well, he's probably asleep now. You must understand, he is a, a bit of an old codger. That may be, but I am still up. And my hopes have not been shattered just yet as to persuade him. Which is why I was going to ask you if you can tell me where he, he is currently resting. I could. I could. I'm sure I could even be persuaded. But... It is unlikely. And why would that be? Well, what what would you do if, where you laid your head at night, a shadow burst upon your room, demanding anything whatsoever? It has been quite some time since anything has snuck up on me. I can honestly say I've forgotten the feeling. Well, again... An old codger, he is not quite 
as capable as yourself. His hearing is... is fallow. His... sensitivity has been lost. But still honorable. He still leads a good amount of people. He makes the best decision that he believes is best for Red Gorge and even those in Cauldron, of which he has not seen in such a long time. That may be true, and it is why I wish to speak with him at least once more before my departure in the morning, if right. we are not to see him again. Consider me a bit of a concierge to the chisel. Allow me to be your go-to man. I'll relay the message. Why don't you just entertain me? <sighs> Very well done. Uh... Pathos, he pulls out his, his rapier and he kind of just starts, like, I guess whisking it across the air. Kind of like shadow, uh, I don't want to call it shadow boxing, but I guess shadow slashing. Sure. Just like a, an opponent that's not there. Um, in a sense, kind of like putting on like a dance display for uh, um, Akane. Okay. Well, as you can see, the situation that we have is a rather dire one, and... My line of work actually extends here now into Red Gorge and kind of like jumps back. The problem is this, this Skellering, the older one, he's, he's going to be a bit of a problem for that line of work. He's already a problem for my line of work in Cauldron. And I feel that having the people take action, having them be a little more prepared for what might come, would be a lot more beneficial to us in the later days, which is why I, pr I want to propose to him an offer. What line of work are you speaking of? Oh, you know, thievery, assassinations, more thievery if it can be helped, anything with an acquisition of gold. But that's our business. And do you believe it to be safe to be speaking to me? You understand that the person that you wish to speak of, or to, so to speak, Oleron Marsh, he he deals in much more than assassinations and thievery. You see, I've said this several times, uh, Mr. Pathos. He is an honorable man, and he cannot be bought. And I don't wish to buy him. I simply wish for him to have every man, woman, and child ready for battle should the time come. You see, I believe that we can actually get some good work out of the the dead minds that that linger here. I've been doing some studies, moving some some new powder around that's been quite a bit of help to some people in the last few days, and to be honest, I, I just don't like having an army being marched upon me without actually having a contingency to get out or at least to have a fighting chance. So... Well, you sound scared. Is... Is that what I hear? Is that what lingers on the night air? The, the strongest and darkest individual I've seen in many years fencing in the darkness, fighting an invisible foe. He fears what a few men are capable of. You don't believe that this Skellering, Tertian Skellering, is going to treat you fairly. You believe that he can, he can, he can plunge through these walls. These bastions have stood for centuries. Many armies have tried, and they have failed. History speaks of it. You should rely on that a bit further before you take upon yourself some contingency and speak to anyone in power in the chisel. Because this might be your lucky night, Pathos Bain Ray, of the first house of Menzo Berenzen. While I am a forgiving man, Oleron Marsh is not. And if he were to find out that he is in the company of killers and thieves, well, he would certainly have you put to death. I suppose. But so I would have to nice. watch my... I know. I, I, I would have to watch my words with him. But with you, which is why I have no 
problems telling you this, Master Honest Minstrel. Well, your, how did you say, uh, powder, this substance that you wish to continue importing through the mines, that should come to a halt. I would recommend it. Oh, I didn't have a choice to, to stop. It was this organization that, that had been brought up before. The Last Laugh, I believe, is what they were called. Uh, they sp- spoke about it when we were sitting down. They ended up causing riots throughout the city, and my passageways through to and from Cauldron and some of the portions here throughout uh, Red Gorge have been uh, blocked off or destroyed completely. And it turns out that this uh, basalt powder I have been Smuggling back and forth from one of the summoners seems to have uh, been, well, a little bit more volatile than anticipated. But I digress. That has nothing to do with what I'm actually asking. It's actually revealing the identity of this Surabar spellmason to the people. A bit of a morale booster, if you will. Certainly. Wouldn't you say? Everyone seemed taken aback. I I had actually no inkling, no idea that his body had been here for so long. A founding forefather, he walks before us. The gods truly are great. Not as great as one might think. Apparently that the Cerebar spellmason that we are looking upon is that of some boy named Klaus, a friend of uh, Master Skellerae. F- forgive me, should should I be surprised? Or were you expecting an ooh? An ah? I'm no, not at all, to actually. Be taken aback. Just... You must understand, I have obtained this name from obtaining knowledge and speaking only the truth. Sing the songs of the people. I've done my research. I know much more about you than you care to let upon, and the rest of your allies. I know that a few of my informants inside of Cauldron were taken and torn asunder by the Fleury. But before I judge them for their misdeeds, I see the good things that they have done. So while I speak to the less righteous and more wretched, and I deal with them regularly, my efforts, even though lost, or to seek a positive claim upon this land. I don't know what you wish to acquire from me at this point, Pathos. You have taken upon my ear, and I wish to give you no more. Very well. But like I said, the intention was to build a sense of morale and camaraderie throughout the city. And hopes that these people would be ready to fight should worse come to worse. The morale has never been as high. I bid you adieu, Pathos. Sleep well. Oh, I shall try. I taste too much fear in the air, though. Might be hard to sleep. Careful. And then he sheaths it might his, be your own. his rapier. <laughs> as he finishes tuning his lute, he seems to strike three fingers across the, the, the chords. Bitterdin. Beautiful. Perfection, if anything. I will bid you a good night, and if you can, give the words we have spoken some thought and try to convince your, your master of at least my modest proposal. I'm not seek I'm not seeking anything immediate in return, but an idea could this idea could blossom into something a lot more beneficial for us, whether we know it or not. You reap what you sow, Pathos. You reap what you sow, and this will not bear fruit you're happy with. Maybe not. But I won't know if I don't try, nor will I. 
and then he'll kind of like give like a obnoxious wave and then he'll just go back and he'll go back into the uh, into the inn and go to his room okay all right so an uneventful night for the rest of you as you sleep beyond the bastions of Red Gorge You will gain back your constitution score to your hit points. You will have received a full rest. If you have to reassess your spells, commit to prayer, anything like that, now is the time. Any questions before we kick into the next bit of roleplay? No, I think I only used one spell. Yeah, no, two spells. No, nah, I'm good. At this point, Jared's at full health. Um, if we're, are we starting the play on the next day? Yeah. Okay. Because yeah, he's going to want to do things the next day. He just wasn't going to do them overnight. Sure. It's good. Makes sense. That's totally fine. Shouldn't be a problem whatsoever. It is day in Red Gorge. Remember. You have to speak an interpretive dance, sir. Yeah. So. Uh, you know what? Never mind. I, I, I'm going to buy that quirk off. <laughs> I'm, I'm sitting here and I'm thinking about it and I'm going, man, that is just way, 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 way too much. It's probably for the best. Well, someone wanted to put that in today. I don't know who it's going to be, but... That's going to be mechanical, so that's 6,000 reps here. All right, so give 6,000 at the bubber knot. Yeah, that's Make sure you get rid of the ad symbol. <clears throat> Which did not work for some odd reason. Yep. You, can't give, uh, you can't give the person 6,000 one hole the bubber knot. <laughs> You have to give its give two person amount. <laughs> ah, okay. Give two person amount. One of these items, I'm actually going to go ahead and get that right. It's going to be writing amazing. a check. Put the name right. first, and then you put the fucking amount. That's right. How often do you think I write a check? How old do you think I am? I mean, you're pretty old. You let's be honest. Take out the two. <laughs> On the check, do you write <laughs> to the person's name? Dear the bubber nuts. <laughs> Dear He's all two. I am, I am writing to inform you. <laughs> I've been so generous. No, no you got to remember, if I'm writing a check, it's going to be like in crayon. Like, here. bubber not your money. To, <laughs> to, to was it, uh, uh, here, this is this uh, order is given to the $5,000 in payment of the bubber not. You're like, yep, that's... That's what I gave him. Yes, Bob, here, big monies. Um, That's but now going downstairs, he's going to settle up at the bar, go for a morning drink and bit of scratch, bit of grub, while waiting on the others to finally come down. Okay. Uh, and he might even go ahead and ask, uh, he might even go ahead and ask Mac about a blacksmith in town. Okay, uh, well, ask. Well, okay. Uh, now he'll belly up to the bar and flag down Mickey Mac. Ah, good morning. morning, sir. Good morning. How did you rest? Fitful, fitful but fair. It's nice to actually have a bed under me for a change. The last place I was, I was basically sleeping on wooden mats. Well, we're happy to have you here in Red Gorge. Happy to be here in Red Gorge. Uh, I think I'm going to go ahead and start off my morning with a pint of bitters and some fried eggs. Um, you guys wouldn't happen to have a blacksmith in town, would you? Nope, not a single one. Not a single one? There are Damn. actually four. I kid you, I kid you. Good morning. Welcome to Red Gorge. Yes, there are people here that can do things, of course. You think it's 
Men not capable. You see these walls? You see how we're armed? Well, the wall has been long standing and is a magical structure, as I recall. And as far as being armed, that doesn't necessarily mean that you forged it yourself. But listen, listen, listen. all that aside, we're, all we're that people aside. of capability here. You, if you need something done, there is a specialist in this town, guaranteed. Good, because as it so happens, I have some rather special armor that needs repairs. You know, as high quality as it is, even the way that I treat it tends to cause damage. Okay. I feel as if I'm missing something here. You need a smith. I, can I need a, a smithy smith. who. I need a smithy who can repair items of magical properties. Oh, well, you need an enchantress as well. Yes, preferably cheap. That. That is a bit more of a concern. We had an enchantress stop through, but she's mm. left us. Uh, probably three to four weeks now she's been gone. Well, all the same, if you could just direct me to your best blacksmith, I'll see what can be done. Shouldn't if be a problem. else, maybe he could repair the physical damage. Okay. Uh, as far as repairing the armor itself, mm -hmm. um, you know what it's like to repair armor the cost? You can pay to have it repaired. Um, it will be an all-day event, though. It's not something they can just tack on hammer and nails and say it's square. Mm -hmm. um, but you guys are also kind of trying to beat the clock. Oh, no. I, I have a plan for that as well. Okay. All right. Well, hit me with it. Tell me what you got. Oh, for that, he's actually going to go ahead and leave the damaged armor, and he's going to use... Um, the hasted one? Yeah, he's going to go ahead and use Red's old stuff. Sure. Okay. For the time being. All right, so in an effort to make sure everybody gets roleplay, I there's like there's no point in us um, inserting yeah, we don't have random to, yeah. Smith. Yeah, yeah we don't have to go ahead and actually again. play that out. Yeah, you can get it repaired, but you will need to see an enchantress. Um, you already know of at least one in the, in Cauldron that you can go to that can do these repairs. Do at mm -hmm. least the magical repairs. Yeah, so long as we don't need to go ahead and have them both in the same place at the same time, yeah. I think we're going to be good. But in the meantime, yeah, Jared's going to go ahead and sip on a, you know, sip on a warm beer and scarf down some eggs. Right. Eggs. Um. Before I step outside, I'm going to actually take uh, my charcoal stick and start lining the under part of my eyes and the over part as well um, to help reflect uh sunlight and then i'm gonna put on my uh black and red tinted cloth mask uh, mask the deity so that way my uh my eyes don't get all hurt in the sunlight sure okay um dea you'll wake up as normal you go through your normal morning routine and you can descend as well um klaus your morning is a bit different it is a bit different they are um you when you awaken you find your, yourself attempting to uh, encourage your body upward to get that forward momentum to swing out of bed but it's achy this is by far the oldest body that you have inhabited um, and he's venerable for all intents and purposes so your your strength dex and con they, they're not going to be quite as high you know they're, they're going to be a bit more hit uh, but where it lacks the muscular ability, the endurance, the fortitude, so to speak, you feel like you feel like lightning. You feel arcane energy just kind of coursing through your body. It feels like an untapped well, like a font of magic just waiting to to blow its load. Oh, we all know that feeling. So I essentially feel like I'm plugged into the uh, the life force of the world. So to speak, yeah. If there's ever been anyone that's more connected to magic, uh, Surabar is a few and far between that person. Mm -hmm. You don't really know what this is going to do to your spells, but you know that it's 
it's happening. Something is going to happen. You feel it. Okay. Um, in that case, I'm going to uh, kind of, I guess, test my limits a little bit and attempt to uh, do everything that I can throughout this morning with magic as opposed to having to go through all the steps physically. Um, try to reduce the amount of strain I'm putting on the actual physical body and uh, increase the amount that I'm the workload that I'm putting into my my mental aspects. Okay, so what's the first uh, first effect? What are you going to try to do? Um, well, probably first off, I imagine my knees, especially and ankles, are very very sore, and typically I don't want to put too much uh, like arthritic in nature. I don't want to put too much weight on them. Um, so I'm going to try to start off with a fly spell. Just n nothing too high. I just want to hover a few inches off the ground. So I don't have to put as much effort into moving my legs. Sure. Okay. <clears throat> you um, you cast the spell. It seems to naturally move like off of your hands. Because everything requires this verbal and somatic spell type. Uh, when you <clears throat> cast this, though, it seems like... There's way less effort put into your hand's movement. Like, it's almost muscle memory, so to speak. So when you begin casting it, you feel like nothing's happened. Um, you can kind of see the, the cinch of magic pop off of the tip of your fingers, but you don't feel your body kind of awkwardly hover in the air. Instead, it feels like your person is much lighter. You just feel like you're kind of coasting along. So it's effortless, more or less? Correct. Good deal. Do you step off of the bed? Uh, yeah. When you attempt to step off of the bed itself, and you move to a standing position, you kind of just free float standing across the room. Like you're not even walking. It's kind of like you're Zamboni moving across the floor. <laughs> uh, alright. Um, I'm going to, uh, I assume I'm still dressed in my robes at this point. I wouldn't have stripped to correct pass out um so I'll, I'll just i'll cast an open close on the door to get it open and make my way down the hall sure when you cast open upon the door it explodes outward <laughs> jared there is uh, some kind of combustion upstairs uh you see splinters fly into the the open stairwell yeah pathos and Dea, you'll hear the same thing jared's going to uh kind of pause over his beer, doing that dead thousand yard stare and I'll be back. Pat, those grabs that plastic thing, you slaps the shit out of Klaus. <laughs> oh <my God. laughs> he's all he's all god of gold. No. Um <clears throat> hearing the uh hearing the abrupt like explosion, I'll uh I'll draw my uh, my rapier. Oh no! You know I'm indoors. It's it's kind of small, right? <laughs> when I hear the explosion, I'm gonna I'm gonna look up at, at Mickey Mac and say, uh, "Sweetheart, would you mind uh, swapping this water for some ale? I'm I'm gonna need it." <laughs> he looks upstairs to see the splinter still kind of slowly fluttering down. Looks back to you and nods. Then he swaps it out for an ale. Uh, still keeps kind of like leaning in, looking up at the stairwell, hoping that everything's okay. Um, Pathos, when you open up your door, you can see Klaus as Sir Bar Spell Mason, and he's just kind of slowly, like, hockey pucking across his room. Not really <laughs> sure what's going Drifting on. Drifting from wall to wall. Yeah, he's just kind of slow. Like, he, his feet are probably about a half an inch off of the floor, and he's standing still, but he's just slowly, like, ski balling across his room. <laughs> I can just imagine hey. him. I can just imagine him with his arms up, his toes almost dragging on the floor, just kind of circling around, then stopping and looking at Pathos like, "Are you enjoying yourself? Having having a good time?" Quite, in fact. Thor's absolutely yeah. shattered. Where it was attached to the, the hinge itself, uh, the brass fittings, uh, and just a, a small chunk of wood remains. Yeah, I'm gonna point really to the. I'm going to point so, the splinters embedded in the opposite wall and say, do you see that? I, I did that. Yes. And you know what? There's a thing I wanted to tell you. I don't know how long you've been dead asleep. It, it doesn't matter. 
there's an invention that they have called a doorknob or a lever, as as they, as they would say. You all you do is you pull it with your hand, and it well, surprisingly enough, the door opens on its own. There is actually no need for arcane force upon the door. I'm shocked at this knowledge. Thank you for presenting it to me. Yes. However, I have I have actually lived a few years on this earth. Uh, it just so happens that I now live in a veritable wellspring of magic, and I wanted to test my new abilities. So you'll excuse me. I can pay for this door myself. I didn't say anything about paying for the door. I mean, we don't even have to do that. That's, that's outlandish. We're heroes. They <laughs> invited us. You hear, uh, from, from down the stairs, you hear, uh, Is everything okay up there? What's happened? And it's the voice of Mickey Max, kind of bouncing off the walls. Um, you'll hear him yelling up. Can I, I just say that it's, I uh, slipped. And fell. And, and the door exploded. <laughs> <laughs> well, if... I am a man of great power, do not question me. <laughs> F- fine, just... Uh, pay... Pay for the door you exploded? That won't be a problem. <laughs> thank, thank you. Yes. Yeah, Which finally, Jared's that? going. Yeah, finally, Jared's going to get be at the head of the stairs. He's going to look over in Klaus's room. I expected this from Sun, not from you. I thought you were better than this. Uh, very last room. Not see what I did. Right door. <laughs> Got it. it. It's fine. It's fine. It had loose fittings anyway. Believe it or not, the fittings are still there. <laughs> in the wall. Klaus, you blew up a door. This is not something I com- This is not something you normally do. You're normally the reasonable one. To quote Mr. Medics here, I'm gonna describe what you see, Jared, as you look into the shattered door. He looks sort of like a sad floating Roomba with nothing to clean. <laughs> as he's <laughs> slowly <laughs> shuffling. So he looks like an angsty teenager. I just Roomba has uh, no home to return to. I'd like oh, to take wait, this time that... to say that it's it's nice that uh Klaus finally has a body to match his personality. Explosive old body. shitty? Yeah. Um <laughs> You're no longer a young shithead, you're an adult is... shithead now. <laughs> I don't know if this would be more for Klaus or Buzz, but is the mask on a nightstand? The mask? wait, your mask? I'm not sure what you did with your mask. I gave it to Klaus. He had put it on. Yeah, so he could wear it. Um, I likely wouldn't have thought about it, considering I feel more at home in my own body than I do in Surabars. Uh, so unless it was uncomfortable to sleep in, I would probably have kept it on. Also, we just lost Sniper, I think. Hi, Sniper. Yeah. Also, I'm not opening up, um, Skype anymore. I'm scared of it. it. Oh, because it crashed your computer last time? It completely blue screen to my computer. Um, as long as you have access to your sheets and everything, you should be fine. Well... Yeah, that's fine. Just keep my token there for me. Um, so it's prettier than me anyways. Just turn on your phone. I'll just say that I guess oh it was God. on his nightstand, because I don't think he'd sleep in it either, because my character didn't sleep. I think my character only slept in it once, and that was because he kind of had to. Dr. So, Space Cakes says he's guessing that he clicked the link. Uh, guys, I don't... I don't feel like I have to say this often, but if someone comes in and they say something like, Oh my God! Wow! What is Grill do? And they post you a link. Don't don't click it. Don't, you don't seen a done. girl as hot as this? Now, if that's what Sniper happens, can't Sniper resist can't resist the that. promise of a grill. So you know, he's really into like George Foreman. I know that I know that it fucked up the cameras. Let's let's give Austin a moment to plug in his phone and turn Skype on his phone on. I can plug in my phone. It won't stay up. If I, if I plug in my phone, it'll just fall off my desk. Put put Frank down and prop it up. I I don't I'm not holding him. He's just meowing at me, being a dick. Also, you can definitely prop your phone up without <laughs> while having it plugged in. I mean, come on now. Um, the technology's well, not, not the, that old. No, with the way that I have it like set up on my desk, because I I like put it up on the corner of my desk. Uh, it if I put the charger in, it just it won't stay and it'll just keep falling. Uh, and I, I don't have a selfie stick to hold it. I'm pretty sure you can figure a way out, though. It's not that not that difficult. Cat. I mean, just 
you know, set it up on its side, put something in front of it so it doesn't fall down. If you put it in the landscape, it's a lot easier. Yeah. I hit it, and then it didn't... Huh? Nope. Portrait again. There you go. I'll turn it is off it, and back on. Once is it actually... Oh, there it Turn is. it off and then put it on in, uh, while it's in landscape. So no, hold on. It. It's because I have it locked. Oh, well, yeah, that'll work. <clears throat> I always have my phone locked. That's hold on, I have, to, I have to move something. I, I don't like my phone in portrait. Or, uh, landscape. landscape. Yeah, I only like portrait. I guess you don't watch many videos when you're Sniper's watching. computer crashed no, too, or what? I mostly look at pictures. Uh, it's not, yeah, I don't know. Sniper hasn't said anything. He just kind of crashed. No, he's yeah, he's he's gone. What kind of virus <laughs> STD did you give me? Pretty sure he clicked the link. Like ninety-five percent sure. There he is. <laughs> All right. Did so you, that's part one. Did you click the link? What link? The link okay, never mind. <laughs> the one that everybody assumed you clicked on because you have no self-control. <laughs> <laughs> I did not click on jack or shit. All I know is that all of a sudden everything stopped all at once. And I'm that's thinking to myself, Red, what internet aids did you give me? It was I, as if a thousand I, voices cried out for silence all at once. I, I told you, it's... It, it's a time traveling disease. Uh, it comes from the past, and it'll catch up to you. Dea is is ranged. Dea is ranged, so she prefers to use a bow and shoes. Hey, there we go. There he is. Set up all cameras. Again, One second, guys. We have a proper session going. What is this? Don't worry, my final. Dive yeah, it's only about late. two hours late. We've been playing. Well, no, getting everybody on cam. In voice, nice. well, you all this together, over here, back. straight and proper. <laughs> yeah, speaking of that, and break. Okay, guys, catch you in thirty. No, fucking <laughs> no, <laughs> no. Alrighty. Um. So we're saying. So Will's saying he still had it on him, correct? Sorry, I, I, I got comfortable to sleep in. Yeah. That you you said well that you did sleep in the mask. Unless it's, like, super uncomfortable, yeah. I probably would have just slept in it. Okay, then. Yeah, that's fine. <clears throat> um, I mean, it's a magical item. I don't think there would be discomfort wearing it for prolonged periods, but... So, yeah, that's cool. Hey, no problem, man. No problem at all. Guys, uh, if, if we could, can I get a, a cap a check in chat? I want to see who's living out there in the world. Also, this is to see if we uh, have been blessed with the golden kappa to see if we've been blessed with a golden kappa the kappa of kappas so what does sun do when he hears the explosion uh, i don't know he didn't uh, know about sun, the explosion i think sun um i because i assume we were all in rooms right because i was i wasn't here for the beginning part i assume we like we slept the night and all that right yes yeah, uh, I would have woken up at some point and I would have been working on my mixtures. Um, being someone who deals with explosives, it's not something that's like, oh, oh my god. It's more like, oh, okay, everyone else is awake now. Cool. I just I picture up Sun. Finish. <laughs> uh, how, how, do you, how do you picture him? I just picture him at his desk in his room, just glancing over and then going yeah. back to work. Yeah, pretty much. I'm looking at my webcam like it's on. Yeah. Uh, he, he basically is just sitting there mixing potions. Here's it goes. Oh. Oh, okay. So. Explosions aren't, aren't that very for him. I'm assuming that he would probably hear it some... Uh, not Maybe not somewhat often, but at least often enough. So where it yeah. wouldn't phase him? Where it would just be like, oh, there's noise. Yeah. It's, I'm not going to be like, oh my god, there's an explosion. What you will it's... hear, son, is uh, what appears to be Jared attempting to reprimand this old man that you've just met. Eh. Their their whole argument, and then uh, I'd assume I'd be hearing uh, Pathos and the uh, the what's dude, uh, not not Olimar, right? No, that's uh, Mickey Max. Mickey Max, right? 
Uh, yeah, no, I'd, I'd hear their argument as well. I'd, I'm gonna continue working on my potions. I have a lot to brew in the morning. Um, so yeah, I'll probably hop out of there eventually, but continue and let them argue. Okay. So it's back to you, Jared. Klaus. That's, that's you, Sniper. Yeah, I, <laughs> I realize that usually you call me by Jared when we're playing, uh, but no, going back to the reprimand. Yes, as I said, I expect this from Sun, not from you. The least you could have done is just gone outside first. Is that so hard? And how are you going to pay for this? Do if you, you recall... Intended on exploding the store? Also, how do you expect anything from Sun? You told me you just met him. Yes, I expect him to blow things up. Like you did yesterday. <laughs> Pathos leans in. I don't think he, you have enough didn't... of a precedent to expect a single thing from him. You, you just, you just, he just met Sun yesterday. He would not know the context of what you're saying. Thank you. Okay, let's put it this way. I have seen Sun blow things up. I have not seen Klaus blow anything up indoors. I mean, in a Cal while, so, it's so been a Mr. little bit, but I've done it. Master, Ske <laughs> Master Skellering, in, in the total entirety that you met this man, how many? I'm going to start with my finger at one, and you tell me how many times you've seen him blow something up. Zero. Uh, from... Okay. <laughs> Context is lost, then. Unfortunate. Jared, you seem to lose the fact that I am old, not dead. <laughs> Someone said you were young. What are you? Well, are you suffering an identity crisis? Is that, is that what this is? <laughs> he's in a way, I suppose. Yeah, Jared's going Jared's to pull an office moment. He's going to look at the camera. <laughs> he's a trans-ager. Uh, he, he lives outside of his age. Can't judge him for it. I identify as a 16-year-old. <laughs> I, I, I identify as a, as a 16-year-old farm boy. <laughs> farm boy slave. Okay, slave is a little far. Indentured servitude. <laughs> but no, that's like the top for me. It explains why Sakata took you when, it, when he's at the farm. He walked outside and just saw an old man just like, What? I'm a kid. Hanging out there in his J's and his backwards hat. Okay. She like <laughs> 1998. What the fuck is wrong with you? You really are old. Jesus Christ. <laughs> holding on to his Zima. <laughs> holding on to his Zima. No, no, I was actually thinking of Capri Sun. <laughs> it's it's at that moment that you realized when when Sun or Sun, excuse me, when Sakata was attempting to. Uh, to recruit you into the flurry <laughs> that you had to be prepared for anything so you pumped up your shoes <laughs> use the tongue pump gotta man. get those Nike pumps man that's right there are times I hate being the oldest one in this chat I've this got a is one of one those times and a tech deck in the other and I'm just like I'm ready to fucking go man let's do <laughs> wait, this wait if it's Klaus and he's the lightning does it mean that he had the one with the lights in them <laughs> Definitely. <laughs> he has his ears that glue up he's every got, time. He's got, he light walks. Up, he's got light up kicks. <laughs> he's got it. He's got his own. It's an entirely different meaning if you go with light up kicks instead of pump up. Yeah, he, no. <laughs> he's got his Mighty Max uh, carrying toy with him. He's all, okay, guys, let's go. And be like, oh, shit. Literally at that point, Jared actually bartered for slaves with like. <laughs> <laughs> and Pogs and Duncan yo-yos. <laughs> I've got an alloy slammer in it for you. <laughs> Damn. Damn, that's Don't make good. me go ahead and fuck you up with my slap bracelet. <laughs> oh my God. You will have no hairs on your forearms after I'm done. <laughs> um, Let's go back to a simpler time when swatches were still in fashion. <sighs> All right, pulling it back. Yeah. Uh... <laughs> kind of leaning into the their argument so i think we should actually uh, start getting some information as to where this ship sailed off to that's not a bad idea actually you know what klaus why don't you and pathos go ahead and do that in the meantime i'm going to go ahead and see about getting my armor repaired We'll leave this afternoon once we have our information gathered. 
Bef- okay. Before you head off, I must ask, um, where are my things? That's a good question. Typically, you buy stuff when you go on an adventure. I don't know it, if anyone told you. Excuse. That. Hold on. <laughs> a good question. What you're asking if I have your things? I'm asking if you know where they are. Not a clue. Good luck paying for the door. Can I do a sense motive on that? I want to see if he's actually like just dick <laughs> He's actually has it in his hand. The sad part is that. I really don't know. <laughs> I don't know if he picked them up off Sakata's corpse or not. Um That's yeah, that is a good question. Right? <laughs> Damn. Because the only <laughs> one I can think of who would be holding on to class of shit would have been cool. you. Yeah. And I know I grabbed your backpack, but I don't know did, if it had class did of you, shit. Yeah, did you grab the other backpack that happened to be right next to it? <laughs> I don't know. Do you, I grabbed the one that was next to your corpse. Do you at least remember where you left them? <laughs> uh, If I remember correctly, we came in flying on a giant bird uh, and that would be a few hundred miles that way and I kind of point the direction that's where they you first met left. Us. if I had to guess if I had to guess it's somewhere in Phoenix <laughs> that's where all the lost luggage goes <laughs> and uh, you no, expect me in all seriousness um, in all seriousness Rad, look uh, would he have had it in his backpack uh, more than likely, he would have at least had some of his stuff. Uh, but Remember, like I said, uh, that you guys, you guys still have not acquired a bag of holding. Yeah, so it's it's just a backpack. He probably would have been carrying my extra stuff in its backpack, considering it would be the most convenient way to carry all of it. Nah, I actually took out all of it individually, and I was just carrying it. You'd you'd be amazed at how I can fight and carry stuff at the same time, but you know it worked. Do you at least have my chakram? <laughs> That's a no. <laughs> you get to start over like me. <laughs> I'm going to fly in front of him and put my hands around his throat. <laughs> Here, you little shit. Where are my things? He moves with unnerving speed. But as he wraps his noodly-like fingers around your neck, <laughs> he they're not very quite, strong. He can't quite get a grip on you. It's like Mr. Burns trying to grab you. You see, Pathos Where kind of are my finger things? He's what like, did you do with them? I was told that's what a turtleneck feels like. <laughs> like very, very gently being man. choked to death? Yeah, trying to choke uh, you. I'm gonna oh. kill you! If by somebody in hard. wools, you know, in some by somebody in wool gloves, maybe. But <laughs> if you men are done with your loveless quarrel, I suggest we get some some food in us, and that way we can start gathering our information that we need for today. And if you do need to go to a blacksmith, I suggest you do you do so now. That doesn't sound like a bad idea. In the meantime, at this point, he'll go ahead and just grab the bag, remove. Red's old arm, no, remove Sakata's old armor, chuck the bag over at Klaus because, well, honestly, he doesn't have any idea what's in it, including the potions that he's yet to go ahead and see. <laughs> yeah, this is going to bite me in the ass. And, yeah, at that point, he's just going to lift up his damaged armor. That's all that I have from Sakata. If any of it's yours, feel free to take it. Another no. In case not, just leave it back in the room. And he's Remind gonna grumble, me. grouch, bitch, and start downstairs. Okay. I'll sh- I'll shout after him. Uh, Remind me to leave you out of my will. <laughs> um, as what as, will you can't die? <laughs> <laughs> Believe uh, me, I've tried. Um, <laughs> Before things go on too far, just a little side note. Uh, when you open that bag, Klaus, the top half of Horum is going to be in there. <laughs> yeah! Christ. <laughs> I'm going to freak out and throw the bag. He attempts to throw the bag, but it just falls before him. He still yeah, has but... to work out the procedure of 
using any strength I'm about that he to might use have. An arm. There's their <laughs> other traveling companion I was informed of. I was actually surprised. I did not know where he was at. <laughs> I was expecting to Pathos to be like, "Hey, you were in a Oh, turn. that's that's what I had to do. I had to craft. Right, because you wanted to go ahead and create embalming, embalming to it. Yeah. yeah, so I could embalm the corpse so it won't decay. I can't. I remember it. that. Pro tip: Go ahead and just find some tar. <laughs> wipe it pro on. Pro tip. That. Pro tip. <laughs> well, tar and feather is easy. Like, they, they, like the easy life hacks on Facebook. He's just like just use this. It's easy. Um. Pro tip from sniper. Face you got dead, uh, okay. Want to stink? Dip it tar. <laughs> so you know how you embalm a corpse. You know how you uh. How you dip the handle of a brush in um in that coating so you have like a rubber grip? Nope, I oh. don't because I don't what involve the things. What the fuck are you talking about? It's it's a it's a substance. It comes in like a paint bucket size thing, and you take like let's say you have like a hammer, like just a, it's a, normal... a rubberized grip. It's, it's yeah, basically you just... dunk it in it and you pull it out. The thing that they show on infomercials. Yeah, you take you just take the body and you just dip it in that. It's perfectly fine. I don't perfectly <laughs> embalmed. Not uh, an issue with it. Basically, the <clears throat> Egyptians used to do it. Trust me, I know. have really good grip on the dead body, which I guess in sniper's case is, like, the thing you want. So, like, it doesn't it doesn't really... It's not that far out of reach that he would know what you're talking about. Um, as, uh, as Klaus kind of lets go of the bag and drops to the floor, I'll uh, pull out my dagger, and I'll walk up behind him, and I'll hit him with, like, the hilt on his shoulder. This is the second thing I'm giving you. The first one is my mask. You're handing me a, s a sword. It's a dagger. The sword is on my side. I and it's a rapier. No, I don't right. know much about bladed weapons. I <sighs> have one that I use relatively well, and that's about where my knowledge ends. This is of no use to me. Defend yourself with it if you need to. The weapon's name is Silver F Silver's Flame. I can I believe, throw it and it'll return to you. I, I appreciate the gesture, but I believe you'll find me more than capable of defending myself in close quarters, if need be. <sighs> Very well. And then he'll kind of, like, finesse the weapon back into his, uh, his sheath. I don't know yeah, what I can do yeah, for you. I'm honest, just gonna blow it up! Yeah, honestly, it's, it's, I don't. It's not a, much of a corpse, to be honest. It's like... It's like a head, part of a shoulder. Yeah. Yeah. Like, maybe, it, it's a quarter of a single peck. There's not much. There's not much room in the bag to begin with, but there's not much of this person. I just right. Whatever I mean, don't fit. get me wrong. The bag is full. I'm not going to be able to get much left into it unless I decide to say dip his you no know, dip what remains of his corpse in tar, leave it to dry out, and then just cart it around like a lucky charm on my hip. Look, you said you had some things missing. What's exactly? Are you missing? What do you need right now? It's not about needing something. It's the principle of when I'm gone for a short period, they just decide to leave everything that I have accumulated over the years behind. The adventurers, just like yourself, you can't take everything that you find with you. I understand, but I cannot expect you to. We should move on. Very well. Do you need gold? Not at the moment, but if the need arises, I shall seek quarter with you. Very well. And at the very least, take this, and I'll uh, pull out from my... I'll take my bag off, and I'll um, reveal to him the uh, Cure Serious Potion. Okay. You seem very frail. You could probably make better use of this than I can. This will certainly be of use. I thank you. Your justice no will not be forgotten. Keep the bottle. I can always use it for a poison later. Absolutely. <clears throat> well, that's enough of that. Being too kind makes my skin feel all weird. Ugh. You too? Oh, I thought I was the only one. <laughs> no, it's, it's a very sickening feeling. <laughs> it's like when you spin too fast and you suddenly stop. And it's, it's not good. It's crazy, you know. He's slowly I can feel the bio. The room. Ugh. By the way, <laughs> let us be on our way. 
Oh yes, and that's right. We got to pay for the door. <laughs> okay. Oh, oh, Mickey Mac. Yeah. Yes. Is, is everything still all right? Yes, there is. You're about to bleed me dry. You're about to take a portion of my soul. How much gold for the door? <laughs> well, uh, twenty-six gold. <laughs> Don't worry about it. You're, you're, you're part of the family now. We take care of our own here. But don't blow up another another door. I'll, I'll certainly make you pay for that one. <laughs> Very well Duly noted. You're First a kind man. Us. You have kept yeah. another. You have kept intact my soul, which is forged of gold, kept in my pocket, in this purse. I shall forever be thankful. Only for this day. Next day, something else. You have to be uh, Pathos, really give me, careful. Give me a, a, a perception, please. Go around blowing up all these doors, man. You're gonna wear a hole in our wallets. <laughs> I, I, I don't think like these. These are like some solid ivory at doors. Least, is there any, at uh, least when or at least when Jared access? blows a door, it's intact. <laughs> intact is not the way I would 33? put it. It's, it's intact, but it's unusable. You, uh, it's you keep file. prattling on about <laughs> your golden soul and your pocket and, and all of this other nonsense. You overhear, like Mickey Max, he's a barrel-chested man, previous adventurer, so his his voice carries. And even when he tries to whisper, he hears, I think this boy is daft. He's been dropped on his head one too many times. He tries to mutter it under his breath. Also, Mickey Mac. Y yes, yes. Elves have keen ears. You're a even, the even the smallest whisper can be heard miles away. Oh, oh. And you, my sir, have a booming voice even at the lowest frequencies. Well, well do they have keen brains as well? <laughs> yes, yes we do. And ravishly good looks. If they could kill, I'd be a serial killer. That's yet to be determined. No, it wasn't yeah, actually worth it. I'm, I'm just sitting here wondering why he's on Mickey. Mickey else. Yes, yes, yes. Right away, Master Max. Right away. After after uh, Pathos finishes talking, I'm going to look over to Mickey Max and say, uh, he's also a, a really good liar. <laughs> well, well. So, uh, uh, well, I say really that's, good. It's, it's that's not what great. I expected. I mean, he, he did try to come in uh, looking very different last night. And his name, Alabaster Glass. <laughs> Saw right through it. A type of stone and then a type like of Like glass! Stone. <laughs> yeah, sir, uh, so he has a, a, a bit of a joke bone, wouldn't you say? He's, he's quite humorous. <laughs> <laughs> that, that wasn't, that wasn't funny. Sometimes it was I'm, I think I'm gonna need another drink. Please. The sad Pathos, part is, Jared's already gone. That's really just me. Pathos I've, just I've got the gold. Pathos Sniper just kind of sits down, really just looks at him. Yo, comedy gold, and you don't even know it. It's a shame. So, downstairs, we just lost someone. Who do we lose? Red. Oh, it wasn't me. Video. What? The oh. Video it wasn't me. It's, it was Red. <laughs> <laughs> it was literally only Look. you. <laughs> um, having our breakfast, uh, I'll uh, kind of lean lean in towards uh, Jared. What's your problem? Jared's really? gone. No, I thought you were sitting down talking to us. No, he said he wanted to go <laughs> to the blacksmith. Door to door. He oh, just okay. turns around. <laughs> no, the reason I was laughing is because it was a funny joke, not because oh, I was Oh, I thought character. I thought your character was there. Okay, my bad. No, no, I, I was just, for actually being there. I was just actually affected at the humorous joke. Yeah. Um, okay, then I'll uh, disregard the last part then. Um, uh, at, at the point. Where uh, where everyone would be eating breakfast, I'd probably emerge from my room and uh, go about my day eating. Okay. Uh, as you exit your room, you see that there is at least one barmaid attempting to clean up the shattered door down at the end of the hall. Um, Klaus is slowly roombaing uh, to the stairs. 
it's like playing air hockey, but you're the only one at the table. <laughs> yeah. So like you go to hit it across, but it's only half hearted and it just kind of drifts. Yeah. Yeah. It just that hits slow. the corners and eventually it'll maybe make its way to the goal, but you don't really know. <laughs> Pathos seems to be walking give it behind Klaus, and he's got he's holding on to like the the drape of the hood of his gown, his his robes, and he's kind of like slowly whipping it, sort of like a like the reins of a horse as Klaus is just kind of floating forward. <laughs> I'm all, hey, hey, maiden, look, bask in his gloriousness. And he kind of start <laughs> furling his, like, robe. <laughs> now, the he question is, you said... Looks downward. You said the, uh, the rooms are upstairs from the actual tavern area, correct? Correct. Yeah. So, the question is really... Would I continue to float at the same height, or would I <laughs> yeah, decrease as I go down the stairs? Yeah, no, yeah. Um, basically, you, you have to guide yourself. with You have your own fly speed. So I like to imagine him not being able to actually go down. He's just oh, drifting like, straight into the wall. When we do, yeah. when he does, I want to grab him by his foot and kind of just like slowly like this. <laughs> just like, all right, come on. Just like, all right, let's go. <laughs> He's oh, that, okay, it's just easy. your living balloon. Easy, easy. Mickey well, watch your... Just kind of watches on in awe. As he pulls you down like a very limp balloon. <laughs> we elves are also incredibly strong. <laughs> I can lift yeah, him with yeah. only a single hand. Man can't weigh more than than, than twelve stone. I'm gonna uh, walk on past him as he's standing in the uh, the stairway. I'm just gonna kind of casually brush uh, Klaus out of the way. And just moving him. He's not a curtain. What the fuck? No. Well, uh, no, I never. They're both. They're both in the way. So I'm just gonna walk by and I'm just gonna be like, yeah, he's not that heavy. Why do I got the feeling that a fart fool. would go ahead and just propel Klaus out the door? Little do you know, that's my plan. <laughs> no, 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 Master been, Mac. He's been saving it up. Uh, I believe this would be a this be a a work of the arcane, as it were. Just in case a lot of you guys don't know from home, uh, if you're watching on at this point, I would say that uh, this For a is bunch probably of jackasses. <laughs> the closest it actually gets to a group of friends sitting down at a table and playing legitimate tabletop games. Um, so if you come here expecting intense roleplay, it happens. Yeah. Seldom, but it happens. Um, they tend to kind of go everywhere and fuck everything up. Uh, they leave a trail of bodies everywhere. And a stain upon the world. And doors <laughs> and shatter doors. Well, we've yeah. only let loose th three ancient horrors. In we've the killed one. Uh, I? Not we. <laughs> yeah, it was, it was, it was really a team effort and hit all of us. Support. Look, can you really just not give him that? He he died for the no, cause. Yeah. <laughs> Come on. Yeah, dude, you kind of you, one victory. You kind of yeah. wind, wind sprinted like 12 rounds in one direction. <laughs> it's true. Look, man, sometimes you need to work on your cardio to get ahead of the sure. worst enemy. Your cholesterol. Hey, I was there in spirit. That's the important part. <laughs> I I just kind of feel like at least one of them would have gotten lost after they had finished sprinting the entire time. Well, you may have been there in spirit, but he is a spirit now, so I think he wins this one. <laughs> it's really Hence why I'm carting around his corpse. Out of love. So, pushing this forward, you guys are downstairs. Jared, you're off doing your own thing. Uh, breakfast mm -hmm. is on the house, courtesy of Mickey Max. Um, it is simple. Uh, you know, you get eggs, some bread, a light ale or water maybe some milk um, and then you're kind of pushed along because paying uh, customers are soon to come and he adores them quite a bit more than you yes um, before taking my leave I'll uh, I want to ask him uh, by chance would there happen to be an alchemist in the area apparently <coughs> 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 one to treat his cough <laughs> would probably be a good thing to to look for. Is, is, is he alright? I, I don't know. He might be dying. In a sense, we all are. Just at a very slow rate. Son, are, are, are you... Are you fine? Is there something no, I'm wrong? fine. I'm going to just take a drink. Oh, good. But yes, uh, as I was saying, an alchemist. Would you happen to know of one? He keeps looking at me when you say alchemist. 
<laughs> I think. You know, I think I think I know one actually. <laughs> Son, can I? Can I have your attention, please? We we step to the bar. Oh yes. Um, I'm gladly uh, get on up and carry my plate over. You see this this man here, Pathos. He seems to be uh, d searching for. Uh, you said an alchemist, right? An alchemist, yes. He's looking for an alchemist, and I I couldn't help but notice your keen interest. Would you know someone in town, or would you be an alchemist yourself? I feel like I should mention that this is a point where I'm wearing a bandolier of vials across my body. <laughs> you, um, also, you also introduced yourself as a medic the first time I met you. It's a lot of the same practice. Depends I on gabble. Your... Yeah. I I like to have a little bit more than uh, one trade. <clears throat> ah, so you're a man of many talents then. Good, good. I am in... Well, I'm in the market for some poisons. Something <laughs> deadly. Hurtful. Let's people know they're dying. Before this progresses... Me, what, 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 what am I, what am I <laughs> doing right now? It would be a talk about poisons that are powerful, potent. Let people know that they're dying. I just said this not a moment ago. Uh, Don't you think that that's, that's better left behind more than a few closed doors? <laughs> I don't see why not. We have to fight many creatures that could be problematic, and I would right, rather uh, have the tools to... I, I wish not to raise suspicion amongst those around us. For, forgive me for, for sounding um, off-putting here, but, but Pathos, you... you your, your race has a bit of a reputation behind them. As a dark elf, well, you must understand people are, are a little scared. And you, can't, you can't just you can't just ask people aloud if they have poisons to kill someone <laughs> it generally well it, it turns up some red flags are you familiar with red flags <laughs> yes and having and telling me that people would be scared good sir flattery will get you nowhere with me I can tell you that much to begin with I'm not trying I'm not trying to flat let's just stop just stop. <laughs> I, I don't. I don't know what's gotten into you, but stop. <laughs> Look, if if I listen, I listen, need... listen, no, stop talking to him. Listen to me. <laughs> I was an adventurer in my time, and I know while I'm portly in the midsection, I'm still strong of arm. And if I have to follow you around and hit you on the head every time you do something wrong, I will. This is my. I town. can handle that. <laughs> and I'll make sure that you do something right. Don't scare the locals. You don't want to incite a riot. They're already afraid of you. Why do you think I'm wearing my second mask and a hood? It if I wanted to go around matter. scaring if people, I would have poisons to kill people. <laughs> Not the townspeople. They don't know that, you idiot. <laughs> I think having it as a casual conversation would have made it a little obvious. There's nothing casual about killing someone. <laughs> I'm gonna drop my head to the counter and just, just like cover my ears. <sighs> Can you at least disguise it? Pretend as if I'm, I'm ignorant to the situation. Disguise <laughs> it. Can you just call it something like getting a, uh, taking a piss? Well, say that. <laughs> Ask him, ask him, get back to right now. Ask, ask Mr. Salutum if he'll help you take a piss. <laughs> I, I'm just picturing Pathos here. here, here. Let me. I need to buy some piss. Some really good piss. I need it's to really be potent. <laughs> okay, Mr. <laughs> Mr. Sun, I, I need to buy the opposite of a healing potion. For all the good that does, I need it to do the opposite of that. No, no, you really are an idiot. <laughs> no, not code enough. <laughs> Should we tell further? This one is red, the other one is green. The green one... Uh, no, the red no, one. I, actually, Pathos, actually, sir, the green Mickey ones Max, are the healthy ones. Mickey Max open hand slaps you. Like, <laughs> I am not gonna love. I'm gonna dodge that shit. What? <laughs> what's, what's your AC? 
Uh, 21. What's your flat foot AC? Because you're not expecting it. I can't be flat footed. Oh, good point. Good point. Uh, so. Uh, this is a yes. time to note to uh, to all the people of the stream. Bub's health potions are green. Yeah. Okay. His health potions are green. He attempts to slap you, but as his hand meets your face, as you slowly dodge out of the way, he just draws his fingers across your chin. Quit, Quit being a tease. <laughs> we have gonna, work to do. I'm He's going to attempt to slap you again. <laughs> you go fucking reach over the counter and just start fucking wailing so on he just, it. He just gives you a little tap in the face. Wait, wait, do I have inspiration dice? I want to roll for this. <laughs> Get out. Get out. I don't want to see you for the rest of the day. Yes, yes, we have work to do anyway. Such a such a stickler, stooge. Before I head out, I wanted to go upstairs and help the lady that was cleaning up the the door shards. Sure. Because I know everyone just kind of floated on yeah, by. Yeah, no, you guys just left her. Just so I'm I mean, go up just and like my job. just like everything else that's happened in this game, you caused an <laughs> explosion of either blood, shit, wood, stone, and then we just leave, or metal, and then you left. I basically In some cases, my door jackpot do all at once. <laughs> turn my door we are helping a, build uh, a productive mine. economy. I might go help clean up. I okay. mean, it's I, more I impressive that you're okay with leaving your room open. <laughs> <I'll>, uh... <laughs> I have nothing left. <laughs> I literally have nothing to my name at the moment. <laughs> I'll, I'll, oh, uh, <laughs> I'll motion for uh, for Sun and, and Klaus to follow me outside so we can continue our discussion. I'll grab the Klaus balloon and follow. Okay. <laughs> so we can talk as... about going ahead and purchasing not healing potions outside. <laughs> <laughs> Jared, you cover as... the, uh, you, you cover the uh, initial cost of what it is going to take to get your, your armor repaired. Uh, they tell you it's going to take a few days. Um, yep. That's perfectly fine. And uh, by this time, I would assume an hour or so has gone by, so he's going to be walking back to the inn. Can you actually make poisons though? Because it should fall under alchemy, right? For uh, oh, I can make I can make tons of poisons. <laughs> uh, but yeah, um, I'll ask. Uh, as I said before, I'm looking for something strong, potent, painful. Uh... Coming up on the group, standing outside, Jared's going to kind of pause and side eye him before moving in closer. If I were to recommend anything, uh, especially <laughs> knowing your race, you could always try drow poison. It yes. leaves the... As, as amazing as it would be to acquire that, I am neither in the Underdark or dealing with another drow at the moment. Well, it, you don't have to use it with another drow. It'll make anyone unconscious. Can you make the poison? Yeah. Then I would love for you to make some. So uh, I'm curious to know, what is your alignment? Uh, if I remember correctly... Uh, it should just be on the on your character sheet. No, I'm, I'm, no, I'm scrolling up. Neutral good. I don't know why it took me. I was like sitting here staring at it. I'm like looking at it like, where is it? So why would a new... You may have a knowledge or an understanding of how to construct these uh, poisons, which is fine, but unless you have the specific training to handle it, one, you risk poisoning yourself. Two, it's also kind of against your alignment to a degree. You, you've always wanted to help people. And for someone, even in your party, to actively search out um, a fluid, be it uh, poison ingested, uh, abrased, something against the skin, uh, through the bloodstream. It kind of goes against the candor of your character. Well, it's also like Jen said, it doesn't kill uh, drow poison. Drow poison just leaves them unconscious. I mean, do you, uh, think, do you think Pathos is going to dress them up and have a tea party with them? Yeah, but if it, if he's not going to poison them, then he's just going to stab them in the fucking gut anyways. 
I, I don't want to think about what Pathos does with un, you know unconscious bodies. They'll do things with conscious bodies. You're too. one to talk, Jared. Jesus yeah. Christ! <laughs> hey, 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 hey! Hey, he likes um, doorknobs, not humans. It's why oh, wait, I tried to I'm not assuming that Klaus her. is outside as well. Yeah, yeah we're, all, we're all outside. Yeah, I'm gonna reach over and cut his tether line. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna float on his <laughs> tail. I have control wow. of my own flight, you fucking <laughs> Nimrod. So, so Dia's hand is completely do? severed, for one. Because she's holding on to him, so you just Bye, severed, Klaus Balloon. Just severed ahead, his hand. To a line. <laughs> I mean, what the fuck is that going to do to me? <laughs> I still I'll fucking like smoke your ass. <laughs> I like the idea of you slowly. Blow you across the room. <laughs> um, but yeah, uh, Pathos asking... Is it something that you can make? I'd be able said, to. I'd something. be able to. Uh, it would. It would take a, a pretty coin at the very least. Uh, that isn't the problem. I wouldn't recommend using it, but I mean, it won't kill them. At the very least, if you're gonna look for stuff to kill people, then uh, you will have to go find someone else. In that case. I thought you said you were a purveyor of poisons. No, I'm not a purveyor of poisons. I'm an alchemist and a surgeon at first. Yeah, at this point, Jared's heard enough of the conversation to get the gist, and he's kind of kind of just loop between Pathos and Sun, and then stop and do a full circle and look at all the people who are making a wide berth around them. Are you seriously talking about bartering <laughs> for poison in the middle I of the street? I could make you something called Jackal Root. I mean, it won't do much besides make them uncontrollably laugh, but that's a thing. Mm -hmm. Prefer if we run into any monsters to have them put down as fast as possible. Or bandits. I, I wouldn't recommend for poison, then. I'd recommend probably Blunt Force Trauma would be the quickest and most humane way. Mm -hmm. We'll get back to it right now. You have other pressing matters. Yes, like... Not talking about this in the middle of the street. Talking yeah. about what? At any point, this would have... This this would have probably incited something in you. I mean, you're a purifier of evil. <laughs> you know that Pathos is evil. He's asking for poisons to kill people. He's yeah. asking for the poisons. Cusco's poison. The poison that's for Cusco. <laughs> <laughs> Crunch. I'm not asking for problems, <laughs> I'm asking for not health potions. Either way, Klaus, oh, you're still Klaus about everything. And if one thing is oh, yeah. certain about Klaus is he lacks patience. I mean, that is true. However, I don't really know what we're aiming to do at this point. So I'm kind of waiting for a cue uh, on that. Oh, everyone seems to just want to do their own thing around town for the day. Uh, however, I, I don't really have an idea of the overarching, like, goal at this moment. Oh, you should go out, get a manicure, maybe go out for a petty. Well, I know. was already saying that if we were going to at least reconvene together, we go look for uh, information on the boat that left uh, Red the uh, Red River. Um, Alec Tercival's boat. When you guys spoke with Oleron about Alec Tercival leaving down the Red River, he said that he would supply you with a raft with a boat that was large enough to carry you down the Red River. Then... Do, do, does anybody remember this? No, yes. I remember it. Okay. <clears throat> but yeah, at this point, seeing as Jared's already handled his business... Okay, so... What have you guys been doing for the last hour, two hours? Oh, I'm sorry. I need to talk in code. We're talking about... Not health potions. You've been doing that for two hours in the street. Oh, well, hour in the bar, hour out here. Like to space out our time, cover some ground. Red, your camera went down again. 